didn't work. Let's try that again. Welcome to the award-winning In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Lamar Consolidated has a car show you'll want to know about, and we're getting you the details. You'll hear my thoughts on driving the new 2024 Toyota GR Corolla. What's a GER? I'll tell you that, too. Pricing in particular is coming your way. And Mr. Mars has this week's events calendar just ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Today's show is sponsored by the Houston Mecham Auction, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. It's supposed to be a beautiful day yeah. in Houston, Texas today. I think the high temperature is supposed to be like 80, and uh, beautiful white puffy clouds rolling by, and mwah! Humidity's down. It's, it's and we're, great. And we're down with the in-wheel time car talk show. <laughs> the weather <laughs> forecast said about. this is going to be the nicest Saturday this year so far. I love it. Yeah. I think this afternoon... I am going to go to the Bayou City Art Festival. Oh, very good. And I'm going to go uh, put my lawn chair out there with Leslie, and we're going to listen to um, Broken Spokes. Ah. They're supposed to be playing down yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Good, it's a good country band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. I think I know a couple guys in there. That's good. All right. That out of the way, let's get to Dion Wilson, Lamar Consolidated, ISD, Auto Tech Program. He is the man. The man. Dion, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you, sir? I'm great. Where are I'm you? Glory. Where where are you? I'm great. I'm at out here at the spot for the car show. I'm a I'm at ten eleven Forest Van Avenue in Rosenberg, Texas. Standing right. on the steps of the natatorium. The natatorium. Have you got your swimming suit on? Man, I always got it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's the birthday suit. That, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, hey, I, gotta, I, have, be ready. I have stories about swimming in, 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 that's in some, school that's, pools. We'll, we'll come tomorrow and then talk about yeah, that. Well, yeah, off the air. Um, at any rate, so uh, you've got your big ninth annual auto fest. So, have you been with the Auto Fest since the very first one? Yes, sir. Is this I your is this your idea? Yes, sir. It's your idea. Very good. <clears throat> how many cars? Yeah. How how many cars generally show up for the ninth annual Auto Fest? We, we average anywhere from eighty to over a hundred. Wow. Very nice. Bigger shows. Yeah. Very good. Now, um, are these are these mostly students or are these? Pros or just everyday guys like uh, us? These everyday guys that's got the nice rides. They're the ones that got the got the money, so we we invite them out. Now, a lot of wonderful cars out here. Do you have you, already? Do you have some cars there uh, that uh, were built or at least owned by your students? Uh, there will be some here a little bit later. Yes. Yeah, a little bit later, like when the show starts at ten o'clock this morning. Right. There, there's already four. Gentlemen out here actually beat me here this morning. Well, you know, um, it's funny how us uh, passionate auto freaks are. Uh, we'll show up in the middle of the night just to get a good spot at a car Absolutely. show. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so yes, let's sir. let's talk about the uh, classes of cars. I see <clears throat> that you got trucks up to is it fifty nine? Yes, sir. And then you've got trucks nineteen sixty and up. You got the four by four Jeep class, Cars Pro. What is, what is Cars Pro? What is that? Cars Pro. Well, that's what mm, it says on not, my sheet. Yeah, right. we've we've got a picture of your flyer up right now, Dion. So that's going it's going broadcasting right. too. I don't have that in front of me, but we have several areas that have eleven different classes. Uh, you know, try to cover everybody we, from imports to. To the hot rods. So, in other words, if you show up, everybody is going to be a winner. Kind of like uh, playing le- little league softball these days. Everybody's a winner. All right. <laughs> yeah, we, well, we like that. Uh, and dash plaques for the first fifty participants. Yes, sir. I like dash plaques. Do you? I do. I have. I haven't. I haven't. I have a couple back here on my uh, toolbox mm-hmm. from uh, events in the past. Mm-hmm. I was uh, going to say you weren't. You don't put them on the Corvette dash, do you? No, there's no place to put those on the Corvette. The the current Corvette dash there used to be, but there's not any longer. 
<clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the uh, the benefit of this show. Uh, I understand it's a fifty dollars donation, thirty dollars donation per vehicle, and um, it's free to spectators. So, what do you do with the money? Yes, well, I am an automotive instructor, so we service over two hundred students, and we try to compete in the Skills USA, the the old Vicar competitions, and we need registration money and uniforms and we also go on field trips and we use the money sometimes for some projects that we can't pay for with our regular budget so it's all to benefit the students so the program is, is this the only fundraiser that you have this is our major one uh, we have a few minor ones here and there well I, I you know i'm always in for a good spaghetti supper or something <laughs> So I'm just thinking, right. you know, you get the pot out and we'll, we'll boil up some spaghetti and yep. go for it, you know. But uh, at any rate, uh, do you have any particular cars coming today that uh, you'd like to hawk, talk about? Oh, I love every one of them. That's, that, you know, that, that, you know that, that that's a pretty standard uh, answer. I think that, uh, I think that, uh, oh, wait, there's no, there's no audio here. Why is that? I don't understand why. Uh, sorry, we have a little issue here going on, and um, I really can't. Um, so the the show starts at ten this morning, but you got folks coming in right now. Yes, sir. Uh, there's four rides here right now. Okay, ten to three is the is the show, uh, and the, uh, you said it's, it's a judge show or not? Uh, participant judged. Everybody gets a that puts a vehicle in the show gets a ballot. We we tally it up and we so give out did, twenty five awards. Do they get to vote on their own car, or they just uh, randomly pick what they think is the is the best? Hopefully, they pick the ones that are best. There you go. But I guess they potentially could vote for their own. Okay, good enough. That's very good. Uh, yeah, we know where you're at, and it's just it's not far from uh, all the all the aspects of of the, the stadium there, and then you've got the uh, uh, Lamar's headquarters, so to speak, uh, just down the road from you. Uh, so this is you say this is the ninth annual. Yes, sir. Ninth annual. Very good. So what else can you tell us about? Are they going to have like food trucks there or anything, or uh, cafeteria is going to be open? Well, the concession stands will be over. We'll have some great uh, festival-sized hot dogs and chips and a drink. Oh, drinks. Man. And uh, we got a barbecue pit smoking over here. Going to get us some turkey legs going in a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. Is that donated and, uh, or, or uh, folks are, are paying to participate as a vendor, so to speak? There's a, There will be a few people participating as vendors, but uh, some of it's donated. Very good. You got a lot of volunteers? Um, mainly the children. I have four or five of the main crew that helps me out. Any of the faculty? <laughs> None of the faculty helps out. I mean, you got a principal, assistant principal out there, uh, uh, sl- yeah, that's slinging cool. turkey that's legs. Cool after a while. Yeah. Do they have hot rods too? I think one or two will bring a hot rod. There yeah. you go. There you go. Very nice. You know, we we should be out there. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. Well, I mean, I, that, 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 we, this, was, this wasn't going <laughs> yeah, to be he, Stump he the Band. I was just uh, <laughs> just trying to continue the conversation well, here. Maybe he doesn't want Maybe he doesn't. There. No, nobody really wants us, but, uh, you know, our mothers maybe. Yeah. Uh, but at any rate, well, it sounds like a great time. I invite everybody out there. It's uh, the Loire Consolidated Independent School District. Uh, and it is uh, the ninth annual Auto Fest out in Rosenberg. And uh, we invite everybody out. Don't you think uh, that would be a good thing to have everybody show up out there and make a little donation to the to the kids? To the cause. Runs till 3 p.m. Yes. So 10 to 3 today. Uh, and we invite everybody to go out there. I think we lost there. them. Uh, Dion, it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate it. Best of luck to you. And uh, hopefully we'll get a few people out there for you. All right. Let us move on. I have a story that I have been dying okay. to tell you about. All right? Let me put that back here uh, because I need to find it. I have it right up here. Right here <clears throat> on her shoe. A really so, big shoe. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, 
This is a story that you're just going to have to bear with me. I think that you'll appreciate it. Okay. It's a story that was uh, written from uh, Automotive News. They published this, and I think that you'll appreciate it. You got it? Things haven't been looking good for Fisker Incorporated, which has halted production for six weeks and could file for bankruptcy soon. Having consumer reports buy one of its electric vehicles didn't help. Uh. After driving the Fisker Ocean for two weeks, the publication's testers praised the EV for a truly innovative design, hmm. superior cargo space, sure. and unique features such as a pull-out taco tray for eating on the go. <laughs> but beyond those few bright spots, the review was as harsh as, well, apparently the ocean itself which was described as both nauseating and jarring. Oh. Here's some of what Consumer Reports wrote. Quote, So far, our experience with the ocean is like ordering pizza at a new buzzy restaurant only to get a pie with undercooked dough and no sauce because the tomatoes are still growing. The tantalizing promise of the final product is right there in front of us, but it's quite unappealing in its current state. Hmm. It's inexcusable that safety and other features promised on the ocean's window sticker come and go, with their absences only occasionally accompanied by warning messages. It feels like the ocean software designers got some sadistic pleasure from programming new and different ways to prevent Bluetooth from connecting. Wow. Regenerative braking is poorly tuned and difficult to modulate. A nauseating experience that called to mind childhood memories of <laughs> driving with my Aunt Irene in her Buick LeSabre. Oh, and a lot of perfume. The standard cloth upholstery feels like a cheap polyester suit. The touch screen is slow, like $99 kids' tablets slow and laggy, and touch sensitivity is all over the place. Consumer Reports also slammed Fisker for its $2,438 shipping fee, the most it's ever been charged. Yet, the $63,981 vehicle turned out to be an excellent value because Fisker what? never cashed the publication's check. Quote, oh. they told us they couldn't find it, the review said. <laughs> Let's get back to the... So, so it's free. Free. Let's get back to the taco tray. What is know, that's, that's, Why is it a taco? Why can't it be a, a smash burger tray or a, a I, coffee cup tray? That's that's the thing I, I really hate about Consumer Reports. They hold back on what they think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel next time. <laughs> oh, man. Gee whiz. You know, somebody asked me the other day. I'm looking at this new, whatever it was, a brand, brand new model car. Mm -hmm. I said, don't buy it. What do you mean, don't buy it? Don't buy it. Why do you say that? I love it. I said, because it hasn't been wrung out through the public's view yet. Mm -hmm. And the service department really doesn't know what they're doing if you have to bring it back mm -hmm. for anything. And the chances are of it breaking are pretty good so give it a year is it that important that you have that particular yeah. car right now like today? Oh, oh, one. today no yeah. it's not but Here, there's a good point of interest when you're looking at a dealership to go buy a car be it new or pre-owned go to the service department and kind of scan what's up on the racks what's <clears> being serviced is it a warranty is it a recall is it a, a for whatever problem Look at the service department and see what cars are in there. Either that or do a little stalking. Right. Stalk one of the service advisors. And so say, he's hey, at, at the end of the day, say, hey, look, you know, I'm, I'm looking to buy it. We're a technician. I'm looking to buy product X mm -hmm. from you guys. Is it worth it? And he will tell you, is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or <clears throat> my suggestion also would be is look at consumer reports because uh, they have input from their people that subscribe to their service, mm -hmm. thousands of them, and they will tell you, and they judge the vehicles based on what people say. Mm -hmm. And, of course, their driving experience yeah. as well. Yeah, technicians will be right up front with you. Um, in fact, they had one at a store that I kind of frequent in the past. Talked to him about it. He goes, no, don't, don't, don't buy that. Don't buy this model, this model, and this model. It was all in the same brand. I said, oh, okay, all right. So I went out and bought it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, don't do that. Don't do that. No. Um, 
I just thought that it was a very interesting story, and I thought it was extremely was, funny yeah, as well. Yeah, it was. They got it for free. What did you yeah. break? That is a great price. I mean, you can get it for free. free. For free. Well, they hadn't cashed the check. They no, couldn't find couldn't the check. They couldn't find it. Don't they, uh, don't they expire like after? Uh, usually 60 so, or 90 days. 60 or 90 yeah. Yeah. Depends yeah. on the bank. And then they've got to cancel it or stop they it. They couldn't and... find the check. My God. <laughs> That's a company that I want to do business yeah. with. Yeah, you know, with all these, and let me tell you, there is still more and more and more startup companies trying to build EVs. They're all trying to go after Tesla. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not going to happen. Uh, Tesla's got a big leg up on everybody. Yep. So I wouldn't really try to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's that's you know, you don't necessarily start out going after the big dog. You want to go in and just get a little piece of it, the action, and, and yeah, nah. And starting up a, a brand new automobile manufacturing company. Boy, I'll tell you what—you have to be really stupid or have really deep, stupid pockets. A lot of investors, and you got to—you got to believe in your product. Boy, well, I can—I can believe in a lot of things. That I, not, that don't mean I got the money to actually deal with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show is available twenty-four-seven through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for Inwheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream our three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com, and podcasts are available from your favorite podcast provider. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in store front includes an 8,000 square foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Mika Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Meekum.com. It's the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show on this Saturday, uh, coming to you from the Sugar Shack Studios here. And uh, we are so glad that you could join us today and every day. Mm -hmm. Because yep. we got lots to do, got lots to on. say, lots of car talk, as it were. Yeah. Uh, I was listening to another car talk show uh, the other day, and I thought, <clears throat> you know, ours ain't too bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, at any rate. When no, I like it. <laughs> I'm glad you do. Yeah, you, you continue to show up here knocking on my door in the middle of the night, but it's okay. I knock, it. knock, knock. Time knock. now for this uh, week's events calendar. Mr. Mars has that. I mean, this time of year, there's tons of stuff going on. 
We're going to start with uh, Lamar Consolidated Independent School District, Ninth Annual Auto Fest that we were just, that we were just talking about. Perfect. That is high school. That's the future of our automotive sport. So we really encourage everybody to go and support that. Uh, 1011 Horseman Drive in Rosenberg. Champions Hot Rod Car Club has an event tomorrow, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at uh, Rox's Bar. And that is at 8905 Luetta Spring, $35 entry free fee. Spectators are free. We're going to be talking to them in our car club spotlight shortly. Uh, also, Saturday, March the 30th, Space City Cruiser Spring Car Show, 7 a.m. Right. to 3.30, 807 Highway 3 in League City. Registration, 40 bucks. Spectators That's old Galveston Highway yeah. for those is it? locals. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, old Galveston Highway. That was before they built I-45 that's still being built. The new Galveston Highway. Do they still call it old Galveston? I think they're stealing I that think, road. I think it's Highway 3, but I think that it's also... Uh, I think I've seen that sign. Old, I, old I was Galveston. in Mississippi and I saw a sign Galveston next exit. So ah, I think somebody's yeah, stealing somebody's that Somebody's stealing road. that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Coming up uh, April 4th. Through the 6th at NRG, the Mecham Auto Auction. Yeah. Uh, one day ticket is $30, multi day is $75. And I, you can go to Mecham.com for more information or you can listen to us at 10 o'clock. We're going to be talking to John Craven about that. But we always know that that is a massive car show, even yeah. if you're not a buyer. If you just want to go look without having to have pylons and all that stuff, it's a great car show. You're going to see vehicles that are in collections that come out for the auction. So it's a great car show to go to. April 25th through 28th, Hot Rod Tour of Texas. Go to hotrodtouroftexas.com for more information. Talk to Bobby yesterday. Oh. They've got very few entries left. They've just about sold out the whole 350 cars that are allowed that they're going to take for registrations. So if you're interested in going, you need to get that in. May 4th and 5th, Kills and Wheels at Lakewood Yacht Club. Uh, killswheels.com for more information and the Lone Star Street Rod Association Straight State Run. I think that's Kills-Wheels. You're right. Yeah. Kills-Wheels.com and then uh, lssra.org for more information on the Lone Star Street Rod Association State Run up in Granbury June the 7th through the 9th. Lots of stuff going on. It is. Just, all you got to do is look in the direction you want to go and you'll yeah. find it. And um, Depending on what you want to do. Do you do you know what GR means from the Toyota Group? Well, if it was uh, a serial, it would be great. Yeah, it's not it. No, it's not it. Mars, you know? No, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, no, I, I really don't. GR stands for Gazoo Racing. Oh, uh, with the Gazoo know. part of the Toyota, name. Toyota, yeah. With the Gazoo part of the name meaning garage. I didn't know that. It is yet another performance offshoot from Toyota, and it's even cooler than you might have imagined. The GR sub-brand began as a sort of skunk works project started by Akio Toyota before he became the company's current president. It eventually became the company's dedicated motorsports arm and has grown to include the development of performance streetcars for Toyota. The GR brand races in the World Endurance Championship, the World Rally Championship, among other series. Now, you're going to say, NHRA. well, wait a minute. What about uh, TRD? Well, I got a feeling that TRD is going to be shuffled off a little bit. Uh, they're not going to promote that as much as the GR. And I think that that's a smart yeah. move. I never yeah. was a big fan of Kind the, of sunset it. <clears throat> yeah. And I gotcha. bring but all this up. a lot of it, though. And I bring all of this up because I had a chance to drive the 2024 Toyota GR Corolla. And when I was told that I was going to get a GR Corolla, I thought, oh, it's just a Corolla that's goosed up. No, <laughs> it's not. It is a hot hatch. Uh, it comes in three editions, trim levels, the core, the premium, and the circuit edition. The circuit edition doesn't have a back seat. It is a five-door uh, coupe. Hatch or coupe? Well, it's a coupe hatch kind of thing. It's a performance subcompact hot hatch. How's that? Okay. It seats five. It's kind of hard to describe. Think of it as a Volkswagen GTI. Okay. Uh, think With of a hatch. It, think of it as a... Uh, WRX from Subaru, okay. that kind of uh, thing. I don't ever recall Toyota coming up with something like this. Seats 5, it's all new last year. Small four-door aero rocket with uh, four wheels, basically. Mm. Uh, short nose and rear, 
Huge open mouth grill takes up three quarters of the front fascia. The hatch looks like race business with three exhaust exits. Not two, not four, but three. Wow. Uh, brake ducts on the front fenders. Uh, what I liked about it, the race style black wheels. What could use improvement? The whole thing is every boy's boy racer's dream. And I actually love it. <laughs> um, interior highlights. Lots of hard plastic throughout the cabin. So, you know, then them dirty boys get in there with the greasy pants and the greasy hands. They can just wipe it right off. Mm -hmm. Comfortable, form-fitting, race-style cloth seating. Fold-down back seat. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, the Circuit Edition deletes the rear seat. A basic infotainment system without navigation. Oh. What? Because you've got your phone. Oh, yeah. And, uh. and they're doing away with navigation systems that are built into cars. It's all going to depend on your phone and uh, your Android or your iPhone. Uh, or someone uh, giving you Apple, directions. Apple CarPlay. <laughs> well, that's easy to do. Uh, cargo trunk room is tiny. What I liked about it, the easy shifting stick. Yes, it did have a six-speed manual yeah, transmission and the GR label on top of that. Yeah. What could use improvement? Nothing. Hmm. Don't mess with it. A 1.6-liter three-cylinder engine with 300 horsepower what? and 273 pound-feet of torque. As I mentioned, six-speed manual. Now, mileage? Mm, it's a race car. City's 21. Highways rated at 28 for a combined to 24. I got 23.5 over 424.7 miles. By the way, tested in the quarter mile, 13.1 seconds Ooh. at 105 miles an hour. This thing will get it, buddy. Yeah, yeah. you're going to need a roll cage. <laughs> the best, the best time that I could get in the Corvette that has close to 400 horsepower was 13 seconds. That's the, I mean, it only beats it by 0.1 seconds. Wow. And if you and it, it depends on who's going <laughs> and who's driving, who's rolling off the light first, and the, to who's going to get the yeah. yeah. It has to do with the three exhaust pipes. What could use improvement? Don't touch it. Uh, make upgraded race parts available at the parts counter. That's all I can say. Yeah. Ride and handling feels like a bucking Bronco, and I put on here yes with an exclamation point. <laughs> what could use improvement? More race stuff options. Oh. Base trim price thirty seven five ninety five. Price is tested forty thousand one hundred and fifty nine dollars. The base model price is thirty six five. So the, obviously the fifteen hundred dollar bump is uh, well. Actually, it's uh, only a thousand dollar bump is for delivery. Competitors: Honda Civic Type R forty four thousand seven hundred ninety five dollars three hundred fifteen horsepower. Hyundai Elantra N. $33,700 with 276 horsepower. The VW Golf R, $45,665 with 315 horsepower. Get one today. Yeah. Hot rod. Yep. That's my review of the 2024 Toyota GR Corolla. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. We are back after a quick break. Stay with us. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katy is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. 
Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tint, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. This is your favorite go-to spot in podcasting and live streaming. Woo-hoo. It's the In-Wheel Time Car Talk Show. A special feature on racetracks coming up, along with Richard Tomlin from Apex Auto Works, right. SCCA, and the racer himself. You bet. Mr. Mars has this week in auto history, and we'll get you caught up on stories making automotive news headlines. Today's program is sponsored by Mecham Auctions Houston, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. Our chief engineer, David Ainsley, is taking a break today. All right, good for David. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could make it along with us on this Saturday live version of our show. By the way, if you're listening in a podcast, our live version airs, generally speaking, every Saturday, 8 to 11. Last weekend, we postponed it by an hour so we could grab hold of the entire people, peoples that were coming in to the uh, Corvette Chevy Expo down in Galveston. And we walked the show after the after the, the program. Yeah, we stumbled the show afterwards because <laughs> we had a little cocktail. Well, we did, but we we ran into some very uh, interesting hot rodders and builders yeah. and owners and families and husband and wife teams and all that good stuff. Yeah, it was good. It was. Yeah, enjoyed it. So um, I ran across a story that I wanted to read. It's a little lengthy, but I think that you'll appreciate it. This is off of Haggerty.com slash media. Written by Aaron Robinson. And the title of the story is, When We Lose a Racetrack, Everyone Loses. It starts off with, Los Angeles is a town with a well-earned reputation for a short attention span. You're only as good as your last 90 minutes, goes the old saying in the movie business. And the hook is always waiting to yank off stage anything or anyone who isn't killing it. That rule applies to racetracks, too. The Los Angeles Motor Dome, a board track erected in 1910, lasted just three years. And Beverly Hills Speedway, which opened in 1920, only four years until the real estate developers got it. Riverside Raceway, that we all remember, Mm -hmm. managed an unforgettable 32-year run before it was plowed under to make way for a shopping mall. Perhaps the ghost of Ken Miles still haunts the place. After years of decline, the mall boasts hundreds of thousands of vacant square feet today. Given the long odds, Auto Club Speedway, a.k.a. California Speedway, did pretty well 26 years from the day the two-mile D-shaped banked oval opened to host 240-mile-an-hour IndyCar laps to the day the wrecking ball arrived. Drone video surfaced in November of chomping excavators tearing away grandstands. Kind of reminds you of the racetrack here in uh, Texas, Yep, uh, not too far from here. Um, Drone video surfaced, as I mentioned, chomping excavators in posterity. It joins the Indianapolis of the West, the short-lived Ontario Speedway, 10 years, ending in 1980, which was just up the freeway. Its land now hosts a CarMax, a Benihana, and an El Torito, among its other pearls of suburban banality. Auto Club's demise leaves a metro area of nearly 13 million people with only one circular track within its environs. Irwindale Speedway, a strictly amateur venue, which somehow has dodged decade-old plans to convert it into a mall, likely because the mall business, thanks to Amazon, etc., is in worse shape than the racing business. Bows by NASCAR to eventually replace Auto Club with a half-mile oval on what remains of acreage that has mostly been sold off to a developer intent on building logistics warehouses for Amazon, etc., have no firm timetable. 
kind of like our Baytown drag strip. Yeah. It's a sad fact that in places, racing struggles to pay the bills for the increasingly expensive land that it occupies, and the forces of redevelopment never sleep. To the north, Monterey County, the deed holder of Laguna Seca, was in December sued by locals aiming to curtail or eliminate the famed track. You can shout until you're blue in the face that the circuit, opened in 1957, predates all the surrounding McMansions. But those people don't care who is first. They really don't. They have money and lawyers, and they are game to try their luck in court. It's a challenge that racetracks share with local municipal airports. The airport where this rider kept his Cessna is a former U.S. Army Air Corps ba- training base in 1939 is when it was built, now under attack from a small but vocal clique of residents who wish it gone. They've already tasted blood in nearby Santa Monica, where an airfield and opened in 1923 and supplied thousands of Douglas aircraft during World War II is set to close in 2028 so that developers can dine on its bones. Once upon a lifetime, a bolder America accepted and even celebrated these facilities as proof that the world's greatest economy produced vital and thrilling pursuits that enriched our lives and supplied a creative outlet to our energy and industry. Now a more flaccid nation that prefers to sit at home streaming and shopping foreign-made junk online sees nothing in these venues but noise, pollution, and risk. Hmm. They are unwittingly being stoked by gimlet-eyed developers who are salivating over the land and willing to fund legal teams and sympathetic council candidates. Replacing a track or an airport with warehouses where 20 to 30 high-density housing units per acre will line the pockets of developers, but it won't do much for noise and pollution in the community. Everyone is bound to be disappointed, except the developers, of course. Yeah. But the ruth- relentless, relentless demand for more housing drives cities to flatten anything in their path that appeals only to a minority. And like it or not, we are a minority. Unless we fight, unless we write letters and go to council meetings and support candidates who believe there should be recreational room for everyone, we'll end up like the misfits in medieval times, hounded out the city gates and banished to the countryside so that we can continue enjoying activities that were once popular in an earlier, more energetic age, at least until the city inevitably sprawls in our direction. Hmm. thought that was a pretty good article. Um, the uh, article again, when we lose a racetrack, everyone loses by Aaron Robinson at Haggerty. And it seems that we're losing more and more. Yeah. They're becoming more frequent Mm -hmm. losses. Well, we've had conversations with Rodney Rodriguez about Mm -hmm. it. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, circle tracks are concerned, very few, the three eighths mile Houston motorsports park is one that's somehow clinging on. That's an asphalt. Uh, facility. Uh, there's the other one, the 105 Speedway is a dirt facility, but uh, it's basically for the racers and not for the public, although it's open to the public and tickets are cheap and it's fun to go on a Saturday night. That's where I grew up at mm-hmm. Myers Speedway here yep. in Houston, long and gone now. D- Dale Earnhardt Jr. did a segment where he actually bought an old old track, I think, in near Hickory, uh, North Carolina. And there was a segment, for, I think, through one of the NASCAR channels that they go and, and look at these features. I mean, there's grass growing up in the cracks of the yep. track and everything, and the old hot dog yep. stand is there, and signs are dilapidated. But it is. It's a, it's a concern. It really well, is. I mean, if for those of us that are automotive people, I mean, what a great Saturday night. Go and take your hot rod to the racetrack, show it, have a section there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that Gina Shaw Knowles did it when she was running uh, mm-hmm. the races on Saturday night at Houston Motorsports Park. Yep. It's fun for everybody. Everybody likes to go to the races. It's fun to, you know, have a, a, a cheering section for your particular driver. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it. I, I got to meet some of those drivers when I was doing the interviews out there. Really great kids. And kids, so fun. Uh, I met a, how old was he? 13 years old. And he won the particular race. Mm-hmm. Didn't have a driver's license yet, but he was out there. But well, he was qualified to run. And that's just it, too. The young kids can get their new mentors and get their autographs and get the people that they want to look up to in the future and maybe guide them into that, be it a, a, a race like that or an NHRA-type uh, event. Yeah. Well, you know, Richard Tomlin uh, is our local guy with SCCA. He's on the line with us now, Apex Auto Works. Richard, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. Great article. A lot of truth in that. Yeah, a lot of truth. Yeah, there, there, there truly is. And, you know, I think that <clears throat> even if you're not into auto racing – 
I think that you owe it to your son or daughter to take them by the hand and take them to a racetrack and let it see it for the real for the real deal. Yeah. And go out there and meet some of the drivers. Um, get get a, a a date with Richard and have him show yeah. you the pits and the cars yeah. and the drivers and and the sport itself. Well, it's the noise and the atmosphere and the and the and the smells of you know the fuel and the rubber burning and and the hot dogs and the hot dogs. Got to go hot dogs. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it also is the evolution of where we're at, right? Like this is what's led us to where we are now in cars and technology. You were just talking about the Toyota, the Hyundai N. I mean, all these cars came from a racing background. Yep. This is where they were developed. This is where we cut our teeth. It's so funny when, um, I guess it was, was it Formula One that was at Circuit of the Americas here recently? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the stands were filled with all of these people that have no clue about racing. They didn't know what they were looking at, but they were there for all the glitz of the glamour and their sweets and all of that sort of stuff. But, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I appreciate all of that, but I also like to get down in the pits. I like to sit in the stands. I like to wave my checkered flag that I've got with me that I bought at the souvenir stand yep. and uh, see who wins the race. Or, or you've got that jersey that you just had that driver autograph. Yeah. You know, and you're wearing that. You're strutting around. Yeah. You bet. It, it's, it's a fun day. I know that we had IndyCar here, whether it was either in the streets of downtown Houston or uh, the built-up the circuit that they had out there by the dome at NRG mm -hmm. Stadium, uh, that was a fun time, and I really enjoyed it. And I took my daughters there. Yep. Uh, I I've drug them to every race that I could imagine, so they have an appreciation for it. And um, I'm sure that uh, you grew up the same way, Richard. I mean, you know, somebody that you knew was into auto racing and took you by the hand and said, "Here, come look at this." I can remember seven, eight years old checking tire pressures in in the uh, staging lanes. I mean, that's just, it's, it's how it was. You, you were part of the team. That's what you did. Yep. You showed up, did your work. Yeah. And that's where it starts. That's where, it's where you learn. Yeah. And I've had the pleasure of teaching a young man the last week, um, about tire pressures. Like, how'd you learn all this? It's like, it's just years of doing the same thing over and over and over. Learn yeah. from somebody else, just like you're trying to teach him. Yeah. Yep. Got to pass it on. Nobody else is going to, it seems. So what's going so, on down there at Apex Auto Works, my friend? <laughs> For me, it's a lot of Meekum prep. Um, we whoa, just whoa, finished whoa, a big whoa, crash. Whoa. <laughs> Meekum prep, right? Oh, prep. prep. I thought prep. you said, said uh, the gold. other word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, nah, Meekum. The uh, gold uh, cutlass will be at Meekum on Thursday. Um, it's a 63 cutlass F85. Oh, my. So, a little bitty aluminum. Uh, yeah, it's a 215 uh, 3, aluminum engine. There you go. Yeah, the aluminum. Uh, block weighs 60 pounds, aluminum block, aluminum head, four lug Chevrolet. Oh, I burned Basically. one of them up. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, when I was it's, 16, I went through one of them like crazy. Yeah, it's a super, super clean car. I want to say it's got like 60,000 miles on it. Um, been stored in the guy's garage for a while, so now we're just getting it all put back together, and it's going to go away. He's decided he's not going to do anything with it, so... Uh, We'll have that one there Thursday, and then we've got a 64 Nova we're working on, waiting on some wheels and a little bit of paint correction on that, and it will be at the auction on Saturday. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And this weekend, of course, for us is just a ton of racing. We uh, Lemons going on in NOLA right now. So, New Orleans has got a 24 hour Lemons race. Are you uh, going nine down hour race there? today, eight hour tomorrow. Do what? Oh, I get uh, this weekend. Okay. He, he would have been there already. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. This weekend, now uh, we've. We've got about 30 cars, I would say, that are there that we know or have built here. Um, and then you've got SCCA going on this weekend up at Eagles Canyon in Denton. And oh. to top that off with NASCAR running at Coda. Yeah. And then we've got the Texas Mile going right now. So we had four places to be this weekend and decided, you know what, we're not going to any of them. We're going to stay <laughs> here and man the phones. Because somebody will be unhappy. Too much driving to get yeah. to all of them. Yeah, because it's a long way up the Eagle Canyon. Or NOLA. Yeah, it's a drive there. New Orleans, there's just no good way to get there, as we yeah. all know. Um, Coda and Texas Mile, pretty pretty simple and close together, but it was going to be a three-day trip, and I decided we weren't doing it. So got all the cars done, sent them off on their way. Um, drivers are happy. Teams are happy. Uh, at this moment, everybody is still running. So we're in a good spot. Good. Richard, let me ask you, going back to the article we were talking about with the racetracks, most of your racing, where you take your cars – they're more like road races, aren't they? 
Correct. A lot of road racing. Um, Do you see we still that? go and attend the oval track, but most of ours is road racing, which goes through the same stuff. That's what Texas World Speedway went through. Was a growing, you know, Bryan College Station area. Yep. There was just no land left, and the land was worth more than what the racetrack was generating. What? Well, that was a, what was that? A mile and a half track? Uh, no, that's two point nine on the actual road course. No, no, not the, the road oval, course. I'm talking the about oval. the oval. Yeah, yeah, I don't know the right. oval specs. It was one 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 point five. The only yeah, I never ran the oval spec. I, I would know. Yeah, Wikipedia. Well, the the only problem <laughs> for a spectator at, at at road courses, generally speaking, and particularly uh, out there at Bryan College Station, was that the road course went out of the infield and into an area <laughs> that you couldn't even begin to see over on the back stretch over there. Right. And that's where all the action was. Great they had bad, the bad bad wrecks over there mm-hmm. and stuff, but you couldn't see it. Yeah. Great for the drivers, bad for the spectators, and that's a that's a thing that road racing is often faced is you know being able to actually watch it. But the technology of uh, cameras, um, the GPS telemetry, the tracking of the cars, as you're seeing in F1 and IMSA, Le Mans, all have it now. It's come a long ways. Uh, even at Pikes Peak this year, we'll have telemetry of all the cars as they're going up the mountain that will be shown to spectators. So. You be able to keep up real time with what's going on, what people's corner speeds are, what their top speeds are, what section of the course that they're in, and this technology, to me, has the opportunity to bring back life uh, to what we're seeing. We're so overloaded with information, we go to watch a race, and people just want more. Uh, it sucks that they'll be sitting there looking at their phone, but. Um, it gives them the opportunity to keep them involved in this sport that we love so much. Yeah, at least they're looking, even if it's at their phone. Yep. They'll be there at the sites doing fun things. I want to say that Coda event for F1 you were talking about, it was October of last year. 455,000 fans is what showed up. And a lot of people attribute that to the Netflix show Drive to Survive, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is season six, season seven now. But F1 is seeing 100% growth year over year uh, with viewership. Like you were saying, a lot of people who didn't know what it was until the fanfare showed up with a couple cameras uh, to record some of the stuff that goes on and now people are getting involved again. So it's a trickle-down theory for us in road race. If F1 is growing, then the motorsports section of road racing will grow. Give it a little time. Well, I have to tell you that uh, <clears throat> I, I, I passively am a fan of Formula One. I'm more of a fan of IndyCar. And I know that I have been to Indianapolis a couple of times, and that is a week-long event in Indianapolis. And um, I would encourage anybody, if you've never been, even if you like, you know, IndyCar or not, Mm -hmm. that is an event of a lifetime to go to the Indy 500 and all of the events that lead up to it. Yeah, there's a reason it's been around 100 years, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like Pikes Peak, same thing. The races have been around the longest. They know how to put on a show. They get everybody involved. Everybody gets up close, gets to touch and feel things, and you're a part of it. When you're involved, you enjoy it. When you're sitting back just spectating, it's not the same. What's going on in your shop out there? Besides uh, getting ready for Meekum, you say that you've already got all those cars finished. I mean, do you have any big, long, hot rod projects you're working on? Um, we've got a three wheel Cushman going back to the Satterfield. Wait cover. a minute! Uh, wait a minute! <laughs> hold it right be, there, man. Buster. When you <laughs> said Cushman, I'm in. <laughs> so they he found a uh, very very distraught Cushman. Um, we basically pulled, sadly pulled the motor transmission out of it. It was all locked up, but pulled all that stuff out of it. We've made it into a prop uh, that will be going to the Stella Hotel in uh, Bryan at uh, the Legends Golf Course there. So Stella Hotel will be parked in the front there and be a uh, floral display. Uh, got some LED lights underneath the glow, but complete redo. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're, um, you're, you're, turning the, you're turning the Cushman into a floral yeah, display. A, a flower that pot. Is, yeah, that, a is a, that is that is the perfect end for a Cushman. Would you, would you the put, only thing that would be any better than that would take the Cushman out to the cemetery and put plants in it. What, do you, what kind of plants are <laughs> you putting in there? Pansies? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. 21 years of service for the U.S. mail, uh, postal mail, and the guy that actually drove it those years was the one who actually bought it back, and he'd had it until Satterfield got it. So really should... cool story behind it, but uh, what a piece of metal. You should tub- <laughs> it's a piece of metal. You got to tub it out. A piece of metal. Plants and pansies. I haven't heard yep. that, but that's a good one. I like it. 
Nice. All right. Yeah. So, so And then uh, we're thrashing for Wawa coming up, too. So that's early April. What's and Wawa? Right after what, Wawa? Wait a minute. What's Wawa? Yep. Uh, Chihuahua is our open oh, road race Chihuahua. in Chihuahua, Mexico. Chihuahua. Uh, that'll be the 1,300 miles over three days, uh, taking the Black Sea 5, a lot like yours, um, down there to go play this year. So it should be a good time. So is that a, is that a road course? Are you on the highway? That is actually like the old La Carrera race. They actually close down public roads, and we race down the public roads. And as soon as we race through, they're closed about 30 to 45 minutes. We race through. They open the roads back up close the next section we race that section move on through the community um we'll see i think it's four different um counties slash we would call them counties here that we actually travel through one day we'll do 600 miles of driving wow well good apparently you're uh, clipping right along there how fast is that corvette what is the top speed on that uh, c5 that you've got um that one's been 178 in mexico the other one we had had a 192 um, in Mexico, and that's two people in the car, race tires, race brakes. I mean, you're you're fully set up, cage and all. It's uh, when you're doing that on a public road, it is pretty crazy. Um, my fastest is 155, and of course that was in the V8 Miata, but uh, it's still moving along on a public road. You don't realize how much that road moves until you're doing 150, 190. I can only imagine. Uh, what kind of engine work on the C5 did you do? Uh, this one's just heads cam. Nothing crazy. Bottom end is still stock. Um, improved oil, cool, oil oiling system. Improved coiling, uh, cooling system. Other than that, just send it. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. GM does a good job. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. GM spent a bunch of money engineering those motors, and even though it's got 70,000 miles on it, it's just fine. Leave it alone. I think the name of the road is Ay Ay Ay. Ay 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 Highway, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I heard that the LS1 motor, which I have in mind, uh, does just fine without any kind of a power booster, power adder. But uh, I've always been attracted to putting a blower on it. But then I heard that if you bump it up too much, that uh, it has uh, spring failures in the valve train. I'm going. You know, that'll probably cause a death knell bell to ring on yeah. the motor. Um, did you hear the same the thing? That, when, oh, it's absolutely true. What you do is when you actually buy it, there's a full set they will sell you with new valve springs to swap them out. Um, it's not a major thing. Um, you pick up an easy 100, 200 horse, depending on how much you want to crank it wow. up. But I don't think you're out there running around beating on your car like that, so... No, Toyota might be a better choice for going faster right now. The Toyota, yeah, might be a better choice for going fast right now. What Toyota? The, the GR, the Gur. Oh, you, the, the Gur. The, the the Gur. Do you know about yeah. the Gur? The Gaz Gazoo. Oh yeah, amazing. Toyota's done a lot of stuff on that. Be yeah. sure and watch Pike Speak this year with the Hyundai's they're bringing up. Hyundai's got four vehicles they're bringing to Pike Speak this year. The Elantra um, and Hyundai's going to have. Those. Uh, there's an N, and there's a couple electric cars that are coming as well. Hmm. We don't care about the electric cars. We care yeah. more about the gasoline cars. <laughs> and yep. The more and stories that back. I read, and I've got enough of them this week, that uh, the whole electric thing is sending the entire automotive industry to its knees. To a tailspin. Yeah, because uh, yeah. companies are laying off workers. They can't sell electric cars. They're selling them but at a lot slower pace than they first imagined. And they've got problems with them, et cetera, et cetera. I read a story on Fisker, and uh, that's an ugly mess there that will probably go out of business. So anybody that buys one, I guess you're either lucky or sad, one or the other. Just lost a bunch of money. Roll them through the auction. Yeah, I guess so. Um, Anyway. I just read an article about Hertz having the same situation, too, them buying a bunch of electric cars and, Realizing they weren't what they were promised. That's right. So Hertz, yeah. actually, I heard, yeah. was losing a CEO over it. That's they been did. out for a while. Yeah, they absolutely did. Richard, it's always great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you. We'll see you. All I right. appreciate your time. Thanks, Thank Richard. You. Take you. Uh, Richard Tomlin, Apex Auto Works, SCCA. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. 
We also video stream on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. And podcasts, they're at your favorite podcast provider. You bet. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Meekum.com. Okay, very good. Uh, time now on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show for this week in auto history, Mr. Mars. Yes, sir. The Pontiac Fiero. It was the first two-seater from Pontiac since 1938, but the more important thing was it was the first mass-produced mid-engine sports car Built in the United States. It uh, was launched in 1983. It built a total of 370,168 Fieros. Five years after it launched, on March the 20th, 1988, the last Fiero rolled off the showroom floor. Oh, boy. Then, see, March 1999, Ford, we talked about this before, Ford Motor Company created their premier auto group, which was, uh, that was in 1999. It was aimed to extend the European reach. They wanted to get into Europe, so they bought... Aston Martin, they bought Jaguar, they Ooh. bought Lincoln, and eventually they also bought Volvo and Land Rover. But by 2007, Ford figured out they needed to restructure their operations for focus on their core brand, and uh, it did away with that premier automotive group. And then uh, the Mini Paceman introduced the U.S. market in March 16, 2013, uh, was released in March of 2013. It garnered a lot of re- positive reviews. People loved the car. The consumers liked it. They bought it. But executives come to believe that the car was so similar to their top-of-the-line countryman because it was made in the same assembly mm-hmm. that it was taking sales away from that oh. vehicle. So they did away with the pace band just three years after it hit the market. Wow. It was another one of those automotive things that, oops, we goofed. Yeah. Well, I think the next one they make should be moron. <laughs> the moron. I know hey, we'd love in. to hear from you. Just shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. Time now for another quick break. You're on the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show, streaming and podcasting around the planet. Look for us on your favorite podcast provider. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that in 
inspire the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invite you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. Podcasting and streaming around the globe, it's the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Brought to you by Meekum Auctions Houston right. at NRG Center, April 4th through the 6th. Just ahead, Jeff has a feature on the top-selling cars, the year you were born, plus snippets and tidbits of juicy car info you want to know. I like that. Snippets and tidbits. Like, Where do you buy ca- those? you got to be careful, careful when you say that, exactly. though. Just ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. Uh, Chief Engineer David Ainsley sleeping in this morning. All right, morning. David. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us today. Also joining us right now is Mr. Brian Sims. And Brian is the president of the Champions Hot Rod Car Club in Spring, Texas. All right. Brian, good morning to you. Good morning, gentlemen. How are y'all? Well, we're Good. great. Uh, we hope you're well as well. Uh, I see you got up early to talk to us this morning. We appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, tomorrow's going to be an even earlier day for you because tomorrow is the big March Hot Rod Madness event. Wow. And I uh, want to talk to you, first of all, though, about the Champions Hot Rod Car Club. How long you guys been around? We... Opened in uh, 2017, so we've been around since then, and we've done. Uh, we try and do two car shows a year, uh, all for charity, 100. percent And then we also do um, assisted living homes and things like that. Everything is uh, voluntary, and we get paid for nothing. But we also host events as well. Everything for charity. Gotcha. Well, that's uh, that's mighty notable. Um, the Champions Hot Rod Car Club consists of what kind of cars? Uh, we have all types, everything is open. Uh, so we don't, uh, we don't want to discriminate against any make and model, even though it might be a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, now I, uh, we, I gave it quite a bit of thought and there's a lot of car clubs that, um, only allow certain years, certain, you know, not so much makes, but just certain years. So, uh, uh, our car shows we have an open class so i thought we'd just keep that in line with the uh anybody that wants to join the club as well so we have bugattis we have um different all kinds of we got vws we got all all sorts of types so well we, we put your uh, poster up on the screen as well you can't see it but uh, the folks that are watching can so the uh, whole flyers are right. there as well yeah, uh, it, I noticed like it looks like a thirty-seven Ford Coupe to, with a big blower sticking out of the hood. Mm-hmm. You got one of those? Is that your car? No, mine is on the. Uh, it's on the uh, one of one of mine is on our uh, club emblem, uh, the thirty-eight uh, Master Deluxe. The and red then, one. Uh, the Master Deluxe, yeah. Yeah, Chevy Master Deluxe, and then I've got a sixty-eight Chevelle Super Sport. 
And then uh, my wife has a 79 Berlinetta um, oh. Chevy Camaro. Yeah. So the, the, the Deluxe that you have, the Master Deluxe, is that a stock car? It, it is not. It's uh, completely chassis off uh, restoration. It's got the 350 in it. It's got a tilt wheel. It's got a uh, Nova front end. Uh, hmm. So it's it's all it's modified completely, but uh, the body is is all original, and some of the interior is the dashboard and things of that nature. Gotcha. So you did did you buy it that way, or did you make the mods? No, uh, I bought it as is uh, from a guy in Georgia. He gave me a, a big five inch stack of everything that he had done to it and all the specs. So, so how did you find out about the car? Did you find it online? No, a friend of mine uh, who builds pools, uh, he's a Ford guy, and he picked it up for next to nothing, so he wanted to flip it and add to his Ford collection. So uh, we struck a deal, and uh, I was happy about it because three days later, I was offered double what I paid for it. So Wow. <laughs> Well, you were my, my wife wanted me. She wanted me to sell it. I said, "Well, I haven't even had a chance to look at it yet." <laughs> so, obviously, you're in love with the car. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yes, especially the fact that somebody's offered you double the money. Yeah, so you right. could, you could have you could have bumped it up quite a bit, but you're all into this thing. Yes, sir. Uh huh. All right. Well, I can't imagine that. You're a hot rodder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost a disease. We we right. know because we all have it as well. All right. So Ham- Champions Hot Rod Car Club, all makes and all models. I like that. Uh, I got a friend of mine, um, Craig Bierman, who has a speed and sport chrome plating. He has a, a chrome and coffee event once a month, first Sunday of the month. And uh, it's all makes and models. Run what you brung, basically, yep. and you run it right over there to the parking lot and park it, and everybody chats it up. And, Googles and, and ogles and, it. Yeah, and then ha- has breakfast there at the Avalon Diner on the first Sunday of the month. So this is kind of like that, but this is more of a specialized hot rod show. Where is it going to be? It's right here off of Luetta and Champion Forest at the On the Rocks uh, Bar and Grill. So we'll have a food truck out there starting at about 7 a. Well, he actually, he's getting there at 6 to fire everything up. And then, of course, they open the bar up. And so you can get adult beverages or you can get uh, water and coffee. <laughs> who who has water and coffee when you've got alcoholic beverages well, available? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I got I to gotta play nice. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, okay, and how much does it cost to get in? It's free to the public, but if you want to enter your uh, hot rod or vehicle or motorcycle, well, you know, you want to bring a boat on a trailer, I'm, you know, it goes in the open class. I don't care. Uh, it's thirty five dollars. Thirty five bucks. And, yes, sir. And uh, do you get a dash plaque? You get a trophy. What do you get? You get a dash plaque, and then you're going to get. Uh, you'll be given uh, tickets for the drawings for for great giveaways. We have a lot of sponsors that give us really good and cool stuff. Everything from barbecue equipment to um, T-shirts to um, True Value uh, hardware gives us stuff. So all kinds of all kinds of cool items for drawings. So that's about every fifteen to thirty minutes, we have a drawing for oh, giveaways. That's very cool. Good Who's stuff. Your, do, you, do you need an announcer? You want me to come up there and do the announcing for you? Come on up. I've got a big system and a big giant microphone, and you'll feel right in <laughs> Well, he's got a big mouth, so it'll yeah, fit right it. in. Well, I, 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 I was thinking, I like the big mic thing. Remember the, do you remember Big Mike? Yes, sir. You do? Yeah. We big, got one of these behind us. We got your well, broadcasting no, not mic that behind one. us. I'm talking about the toy one for kids. Oh. Big Mike had, oh. the, had the radio and the microphone. Hey, we're right. gonna pick you up later. Yeah, no, right. That was Mr. Microphone. <laughs> Mr. That's Microphone. That's right. Yeah. Well, this sounds like lots of fun. <laughs> so, uh, for those that are listening and, and and like me that can't remember anything, <laughs> um, where can we get all the information on this? Is this over at Champions Hot Rod Car Club dot com? Yes, sir. Or just Facebook Champions Hot Rod Car Club. Okay. And what time are you getting there tomorrow morning? Six? I'll be I'll be there about six thirty to start setting everything up and getting everything lined out and getting the, everything roped off and con, uh, coned off. Yeah. Is it a big parking lot? 
Yeah, it's huge. And it's really nice and it's set up really well. So we have one entrance and one exit. So that's perfect. And uh, it works real well. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a haul for uh, somebody that is down here in Sugarland to get all the way up there. It's kind of like going to South Dallas. Ah, come on now. <laughs> you can be anywhere in 15 minutes. Well, yeah, kind of. It depends on how hard you push the accelerator pedal. Right? I, I, I was, I was uh, kind of thinking, you know, there's a possibility. It's a Sunday morning. Yeah. And uh, get out there. It needs a wash job. So we'll get out there and wash Ooh. it and bring it. What time does it end? Well, I, I guess the trophies is somewhere around uh, 1 o'clock. There you go. Yes, sir. Around one, one thirty, we pass out trophies, and then everybody just kind of hangs out or does their own thing. It gives everybody plenty of time that if they got a family event or something, they can break out at one thirty-two and yeah. go on about their enjoy business. the rest of the day. Yeah, go to yeah, church yes, and then go to the event. Yeah, get go. up. Yeah, go to sunrise services. Yeah, uh, yeah they at your church, and then head on up to the uh, March Hot Rod Madness. From the Champions Hot Rod Car Club. Well, it's great to talk to you. It's a uh, it's great to meet you, and hopefully, uh, you'll uh, tell your friends about us. And you can look at yourself, and you can hear yourself on all of our podcasts coming up in the week ahead. Cool, that'd be great. All Thanks right. for your time, gentlemen. Hey, thank you. Thank we you. appreciate Enjoy you. Enjoy the show. And, yeah, yeah, have a good time yeah. up there. All right, that that ought to be. Two tons of fun. Yeah, and the weather's again supposed to be really nice tomorrow too. Yes, it so is. I think it's supposed to be that. a little bit more cloudy, which well, would be perfect for a car show. Yeah. Well, depending on what your version of cloudy, the puffy white ones, and you know, where you can see little angels and little bunnies and things in it. Yeah. It depends on uh, what kind of ganja and, you're smoking. Well, no, he did say, say he's going. He said there's going to be adult beverages, so you know. Yeah, well, yeah, you'll be seeing all be, sorts of things with those. elephants. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Just saying. Black Rifle Coffee. You know, I keep hearing about Black yeah. Rifle Coffee Company. Mm -hmm. You? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It's a great name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a veteran-owned uh, organization. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. um, I, had, I didn't get in, uh, any of the stories in that I wanted to. Um, I've got recalls, oh, and I've got news stories. Which one would you like to have? Uh, do the recall. Hyundai Motor Company and Kia America are recalling a combined 147,100.1 100 U.S. vehicles <laughs> over a damaged specific. charging unit. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says nay, nay, nay. <laughs> uh, the uh, integrated charging control unit may become damaged and stop charging the 12-volt battery, which can result in a loss of drive power, increasing the risk of a crash and safety regulator. And as with all of the recalls, you go to safercar.gov, type in your VIN number with uh, that you'll be able to find on your insurance card that you should have on your wallet or on your phone, and it'll tell you whether or not your car has been recalled. Mm -hmm. Tesla Model 3, S, X, and Y, pretty much all of them, uh, 2013, 2018 to 2022's muted pedestrian warning sound. Boy, I'll tell you what, I'm going to spend a lot of energy on that. Well, is that one of those downloads that they do? Or? I, don't, I don't know. High voltage battery may overheat in the Jag, Jaguar I-Pace for 2019. That's a recall. Yeah. Improperly secured ball joint in the steering gearbox. Hmm. Loss of steering control, you think? Yeah. Honda Passport and Ridgeline for 2023. That's being recalled. Turn right. Fuel tank may leak fuel from Ford Motor Company, the Ford Maverick for 2024. Are those Don't plastic tanks? Don't know. Ford Explorer 2020 rear view camera image may not display. You paid for it. Make it work. What Another one from Ford Motor Company. Child safety lock malfunction. Ford Bronco 23 and 24. Jeez. What did you do before the backup camera? You turned your head around and looked out the window. <laughs> That's right. don't, don't you remember that? It was part of the driving test. I don't trust uh, mine. Yeah, you have to You have to turn and look over your right shoulder mm -hmm. when you're backing up. Yeah, I still do that. I do, too. Engine compartment fire from an oil leak. The Genesis G70, 80, and 90, 2019 through 2022. Oh, you just had one of those, didn't you? No, you had I the, had you a had the... 2024 G80. That's what it was. And it, it's not under recall. No, yet. Airbag may not deploy due to clock <laughs> spring time. failure. Jeep Wrangler, 2016. Stellantis's Chrysler and Dodge brands are recalling 285,000 U.S. vehicles over a manufacturing defect that might cause the side curtain airbag inflators to rupture. Oh. 
The right and left side air curtain airbag inflators may rupture in sharp metal fragments striking occupants, resulting in injury or death. Uh, these inflators do not use the same propellant or inflator design as previously recalled Takata airbags, according to the automaker. Those are all the recalls mm-hmm. that I have for you at the moment. Okay? Yep. Now, uh, I do have tons of stories. We need to take a break here in a minute, but I want to get the stories in, okay? Sure. You, do you mind? No, not at all. All right. Ford is sending buyers of its newest performance pickup to school. The what? Ranger Raptor Assault School, <laughs> opening, okay. opening this June in Utah's Tool Valley, is included with the purchase of a 2024 Ranger Raptor pickup. Owners can learn off-road maneuvers, such as rock ca- crawling and side-hilling over a variety of terrain. The one-day experience, similar to the automaker's Mustang Dark Horse Track Attack and Bronco Off-Rodeo, was developed with input from Ford Performance. Um, school provides vehicles, safety gear, and meals. Uh, 405 horsepower Ranger Raptor starts at $57,065 couldn't with just, shipping. Couldn't you just join a club, an off-road club? and Exactly, yeah. and do it for free. You know, maybe $10 a year dues or something like that. Well, even that. I mean, you know, spend a little money on gas, put some gas in it, drive it out to wherever they're having an event and go for Just it. Just go teach yourself. Well, the other thing is, is that there are always guys out there that have a lot more experience than you. So pick their brain. Yeah. Have, well, I do a ride along. Get them to sit in the seat with you and show you how to do it. And if it's real serious off-road, they've got spotters there. They're going to help you anyway. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. right. Or not. And as a matter of fact, and if you have any river running to do, you can just drive it right off into the river and then into the deep part of the river and put it right up past the windshield. And, and you remember what event I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we had a fellow journalist that did that after they said, don't venture off the shore. Run it in the river, but don't go out into the river. There's a deep spot out there. Yep. Plunk sure enough. right on in there. Sure enough, it was. EPA on Wednesday finalized a rule that sets tougher limits on vehicle tailpipe pollution through 2032, but eases requirements in the early model years to appease auto industry concerns of a too fast transition to electric vehicles. Compared with EPA's proposal in April, the final rule on light-duty vehicle emission standards for the 27 through 32 model years adopts a less aggressive pace of greenhouse gas emission reductions in the first few model years, followed by more stringent reductions after 2030. Agency now projects battery electric vehicles will account for 30 to 56 percent of new light-duty vehicle sales in the 2030 to 2032 model years, down from the controversial 67 percent in 2032 that the EPA projected in its proposal. But hmm. but but again, that's their proposal. That's what they want. That's really not a projection of really where things are going. That's just that's what they want it to be. Yes. So because they all want to keep their job and not get fired by well, Joe. It's, it's a big difference between making a real projection and saying, this is our dream wish. Yeah, it's that's silly. It is silly. I'm not, I have go, those I'm not going there. Dream wishes. Uh, the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. And a new daily podcast is available from your favorite podcast provider throughout the week. We also video stream our three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000 square foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. 
Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge and Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at GodsGarage.org. Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Mecham experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Mecham.com. Welcome back to the In-Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address here is info at inwheeltime.com. Mr. Zekin mm-hmm. happens to have the top-selling cars the year that you were born. Yeah. I didn't know that the history went back that far for me. Well, we're going to get to you in just a moment. Okay. But first. Yes. This is how it all started. We're going to go that way. Mike, there you go. So we're going to take a uh, stroll down memory lane. These are the most, this is the most popular. I don't have a memory anymore. Yes, you do. Now, I found this on Reader's Digest, not National Geographic, but Reader's Digest. Don't it? I love those National Geographic. <laughs> Remember looking at those when you were a kid, well, Mars? Well, <laughs> why I brought that up, I don't know. Uh, but I was born in 57, and the top selling vehicle. In 1957 was a Ford Skyline. Its dominant and most striking feature was a high-tech hardtop convertible. It was a roof that gracefully opened and arced back into a rear hinge trunk in a matter of seconds. To accomplish this, Ford had no less than six motors, four lift jacks, a host of electrical relays, ten solenoids, four power locking mechanisms, and over 600 feet of wire. War, war, war. And a lot of war 600 there. feet of war. The next one goes out to our good friend and engineer David Ainsley. He was born in 1964. He's a youngster. The Ford Mustang was the most popular car in that year. Probably the single most iconic 60s car in America. The 64 Mustang started a revolution. It's a good-looking and cheap. The original Mustang wasn't fast, but it offered a V8 option that showed the capability of the design. So there you go for 64. The next one, Michael, is for you, sir. 1952 is the year you were born, and you are a Buick Roadmaster. That's not a 52, is That's it? a 52 Buick I Roadmaster. I not either. Uh, 52 saw many iconic vehicles being produced and devoured by a public eager for shiny new wheels, Michael. The Buick Roadmaster was a popular car model that, looking back on it now, seems perfectly indicative of the glitz and Hollywood glamour of the 50s, just like you. Just like you, Mike. Now, this next one, this goes out to Don, and I think, George, y'all were put to high school together and and probably born in the same year. Well, I couldn't find the actual picture, but I did find these two kind of Toga wagons. <laughs> that one is the hardtop. Now, this actual car would be a Studebaker Starlight Coupe. The That's Starlight uh-huh. Coupe featured an innovative wraparound greenhouse rear window that uh, nearly 60 years later looks super sharp and futuristic, just plain cool. <laughs> okay. No one could ever call the Starlight a weird Air vehicle. <laughs> and that one is the convertible version of the whatever we could find for Don and George. So there you go, guys. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, about I really that? appreciate that. <laughs> huh. Yeah. We've got a high school reunion coming up. Yeah, you do. And that kind of fits. It does. But uh, the Reader's we'll, Digest, we'll, you can find we'll, that. We'll arrive together in the Conestoga <laughs> wagon. <laughs> I think that was an wonder who Was that Mr. or Mrs. Conestoga? I don't know. But What does Conestoga mean? 
that it's just the vehicle. I think it was the design, the shape, I believe. Of, never, of, the, of the the only horse thing I've ever heard. Carriage. Well, the only thing that I've ever heard Conestoga was a wagon like that. Yeah, Conestoga wagon because it was horse drawn. It was pulled. <laughs> George, George is not <laughs> impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, George. I had to get you involved, buddy. <laughs> Hemmings dot com sold cars roundup. Ready? Yeah. Got your pen and paper yeah, ready, you Mars. Got your scorecard. Nineteen ninety Chevrolet Corvette looks stock. Uh-oh. Uh oh. It is maroon. Uh, okay. And uh, it has a beige interior, mm-hmm. a 1990 Chevrolet Corvette. What do you think you could buy that for? The beige one? Uh, I'm going to no, say. No, beige interior. It was oh. a maroon exterior. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. Saddle. So, so I'm going to go 16.5. I'm going to go 11. 10. Ooh. 10,000. Must no have some over. serious miles on it. I don't know. It looks pretty good, but whatever. Here's another one. We'll keep in the Corvette family here. Mm-hmm. A 1976 Chevrolet Corvette. Uh, my friend Buddy had uh, had that. I had the 77. What do you think that that 76 sold for? It's white with a red interior. Four- Eight. 14. What did you say? Eight. You said eight thousand. I said fourteen. Yeah. You said fourteen. Actually, fifteen seven. Yeah, good. It looks really. It looks really. Uh, it has the. Uh, but that's just not a real popular year. Well, I'm looking at one no, on the not. wall right there. It's not. Uh, it's no, 70, it's, that's seventy seven. Seventy seven. That's my seventy seven up there. Yeah. Uh, how about a nineteen eighty seven Toyota pickup truck with a camper shell on the back of it, and it looks like one of those Max. Cabs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which you know you could mm-hmm. squeeze two people back there yep. sideways. Ex- extended cab type thing, yeah. yeah. Jump seats. I don't know whether it is or not, uh, but it looks that way. Seventy eight hundred dollars. Seventy eight hundred. Mm-hmm. Give you five thousand. Five thousand. How about twelve thousand? Ooh, wow. Twelve thousand. I don't get a point for that. Was he nowhere near it? The only problem with those, <laughs> you once you, once you get was. back into that, they, they you know tend to have rust issues. But how about a seventy eight Chevy Impala two door? A two-door Chevy Impala looks completely stock. It has complete big, you know, wheel covers on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but it's what you call seafoam green. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Green cars, never. Yeah, I like this. Okay, so 78 Chevy it. Impala. This would be one for Kylie. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mars, what would you think that that would go for? Mm, I'm going to reach. clean, no re- dents. I'm going to reach for 12. 12? 5,500. 5,500, you're closest. 6,400. Ooh, there you go. 6,400. Look at it. It looks really good. I like the seafoam green. I like that. In uh, fact, and, and I my, like the fact that it's a two door. Before yeah. I got the Nova, my parents actually bought me a Chevy Malibu seafoam green with a white top. Not It was a hard top, but it was paint. It wasn't a vinyl. Yeah. And on the way home driving it, they said, you know what? That's too nice for you. You can have the Nova. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to begin with. Exactly. There you go. All right. Um, Time now for a quick break. Mm -hmm. Uh, Today's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is sponsored by the group of original Loopy Tortilla restaurants in Houston, Beaumont, and College Station, Gulf Coast Auto Shield, and Pro-Am Auto Accessories. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? 
Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. Heard and seen around the world with our clothes on. Huh. It's the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Just ahead, we're going to talk to Shea Manoir about the cost of charging an EV versus the cost of fueling your gas-powered vehicle. Jeff has this week's cruise ins, and we'll have the stories making automotive news headlines. Today's show is sponsored by Meekum Auctions Houston at NRG Center, April 4th through the 6th. Howdy. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars, we always need more Jeff Zekin. Mm-hmm. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this Saturday. It's a beautiful day in Houston, Texas, and uh, out here in Snooggy Land. <laughs> we're glad that you could join us, as I said. And we're well, also hey. glad that Shay Manowar is joining us, too, from the Anderson Economic Group. Shay, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? Well, good. good. It's good to talk to you again. So let's talk about ICE versus EV, internal combustion engines versus electric vehicles. And there is this myth, and I say that loosely, this myth that EVs are for free when it comes to fueling or recharging your batteries. But that is not the case, sir. I like free. I, I I've learned in my life there is nothing free, and anything that that is free, I, I try to run away from it uh, because it eventually costs you more at the end. But I'm glad that you talked about ice because uh, you also talked about nice Texas weather. We in Michigan had about uh, three four inches of snow, um, so it's uh, it's back to uh, Christmas season here. Yeah, you did. In fact, probably July. That's going to be clearing up for you. <laughs> Just to at let that, you know. At that, at that point, we stopped hoping. I mean, we just wait till okay, you know, a couple of more months of not snow and then I, go back. To I grew up there. That's why I'm down here. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a warmer weather, and now I'm up here. But uh, it's it's still it's still good to have. Uh, be, it's good to be back on the show. And yes, going back back to the topic of which is cheaper to charge or fuel. Uh, we have been doing these studies for nearly two years now. We look at quarterly data. We look at. Um, uh, EV vehicles by segments, we look at ICE vehicle by segments, and we group them together, and then we look at which is um, uh, less, which is cheaper, which is more expensive to fuel. Uh, based on our quarter three, uh, last quarter of last year, uh, it turned out that at this point of time, uh, most of the internal combustion engine vehicles are still cheaper to fuel for most consumers. Uh, compared to their EV counterparts. And we look at that based on how we classify um, internal combustion engines and electric vehicle cars by segments on on price tags. Okay, so the, the price of the vehicle does kind of play a part in this. From what I'm looking at here on, on the uh, rundown, um, the entry-level vehicles are cheaper to fuel when it comes to gasoline engines, it's also cheaper to fuel in the mid price. Now, these include cars and crossovers, right? And yeah. so, so gasoline is still cheaper there. And actually, in the difference between the entry and the mid level pricing of cars that have internal combustion engines is less than a dollar. Hmm. Uh, and then, uh, then you jump to the luxury vehicles and Wow. The price of the luxury vehicles uh, across every segment of your chart here is more expensive. Yeah, and, and one main factor is the is the type of fuel that typically goes into luxury vehicles. I mean, most consumers, my understanding is they like to have premium uh, gasoline for their premium price cars. Uh, so that plays that plays if a role. And then uh, we also noted that Accessibility to to charging uh, for luxury vehicles tend to be uh, 
a little different for a typical mid-price or entry-level EV owner. Uh, for instance, we also know that most of the EV buyers who drive high-priced EV vehicles have a very subtle infrastructure to charge their vehicles either at home or they can afford to uh, have some dead and mi deadhead miles to go to a commercial charging. So these are some of the factors that play a big role in how we look at the inputs and then eventually look at how much it would cost for a typical EV driver or ICE dr uh, driver um, to charge uh, for at least 100 miles. I, I filled up my 2001 Corvette, uh, three quarters of a tank of gas uh, with premium fuel from Exxon, an Exxon station. So the supreme, <laughs> the supreme price for gallon is was four dollars and nine cents, okay, for premium fuel, and I bought twelve point four four three gallons of gas. Okay. And it, that figures out to $51 for three-quarters of a tank of gas for me this week. It, the Corvette, they request that you put premium fuel in. Sure, right. Yeah. So I guess I would fall into that category, but I think I'd really kind of fall into the truck category, I think. I mean, it was expensive, man. But I think, I think it's probably more expensive up there, isn't it? Yeah, I was about to say that. I mean, uh, having uh, living in Texas does give you some liberty of of, of uh, some low rate, less gas. expensive fuel, right? But any, that's fuel. not. Well, it may be less expensive to what he pays right, up there. Right. Do you know what the premium price of fuel up there in Detroit is? Um, so it's it's touching. It's going a little over four nowadays. Depends on if you go to Costco or not. If you go to Costco, then you might get a little uh, discount. However, we also know that the the pricing does play a huge role, the gas prices. For instance, last year at some point, the, the gasoline price, when it jumped, especially in June of 2021, it was touching four or five per gallon, even in, in, in Michigan up here. Uh, and then that discouraged uh, many, of, uh, many of ICE drivers. And then we also noted that the price to to charge your EV was uh, was a little cheaper than the than the ICE vehicle. So the gas prices do play a big role, and we have been noting this every quarter. Um, right now, based on my understanding, the average gas price across the U.S. is about 3.2 uh, per gallon. But that's that's the standard gas, not premium. Correct. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's close to what it is here. I think it's touching three dollars a yeah, gallon right now. Depending on where you go and the, the quality yeah. of the station, it could be a mom and pop that offers. Not the best quality grade of gasoline, I would imagine, but then you've got the Exxons like you go to, or the Shells that have a little bit different uh, premium well, I, pricing. Well, I, I just I choose to buy top tier gas. Right. Uh, for, well, you have to for, for your car for the Cor yeah. right. Corvette. But right. I mean, even the even the lower tier that that aren't even in the top tier, mm -hmm. you know, the Seven Eleven gas. Right. Um, Actually, the Seven Eleven store has top tier gas. It does. And it does. But uh, you know, Don's Corner Stop. It has premium gas, but it's a lot less, and yeah. we don't know what it is. It's got a filter over the nozzle, so you don't. Get <laughs> That's right. You don't have to. So All right. So let's let's talk about then the comparison with the electric vehicles, and. I'm sure that you've got a similar situation up there in Detroit that we have here. I know that there are power companies, power providers here that tout the fact that you get free electricity at night. Uh, if you know you buy their one plan. year or two year plan right. uh, between the hours of midnight and six o'clock in the morning, your electricity is free. But they've got to make that up somewhere. So it's it's a, all a juggling act, you know. And I would imagine that that probably plays a price in this too, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, yes, it does. But then the main factor is the size or the current infrastructure that we have for for EV buyers uh, in Michigan, for instance. I can speak for Michigan. I can also speak for uh, the town where I live in. Uh, what we have been noting is that those who might be interesting in buying EV vehicles, uh, they would purchase despite what the EV 
Oh, well, despite what the energy prices are looking, I mean, just because they're interested in the vehicle, uh, despite the, the the price hike for many EV segments. Uh, however, for for mass consumers, uh, infrastructure is such a significant uh, factor that goes into if they decide to buy an EV or not. Uh, and one big factor is how they can place a charging um, setup in their home or in an apartment where they live in. And then once they know that there is a system in place, then the EV uh, or char or energy prices uh, tend to play a role in consumer psyche. So we tend to read how consumers are behaving towards um, EV adoption. And every time there's a news about how batteries play a part in in um, in EV uh, cars, I mean it does. It either tends to discourage them or encourage them. I mean recently we had a news. There was there was a news in in an, um, in Wall Street Journal that it was not the lithium battery that was causing problems for the new EV drivers. It was a small twelve volt EV, not twelve volt battery uh, that tends to fuel or tends to charge uh, other components of the car was causing issues for many new EV drivers. So so the three big factors what we have been noticing is a the infrastructure if there's good enough or not. At this point in time, you will find a lot more uh, gas stations than EV charging stations. And second, the price. Uh, most of the EVs, as of right now, the average transaction price is higher than the average transaction price of a standard car. Yeah. Um, and the third um, is, yes, the, the the overall safety that is around the EV. And then all these three b big factors have been playing a role in, in driving down the sales for most of the EV segments uh, in the past couple of quarters. What what do you drive? I recently got a Toyota Grand uh, Highlander. Okay. And a Buick LaCrosse. So those two cars, my wife and I, depending on who's uh, driving. And, the and you drive a LaCrosse? I drive a LaCrosse, which is uh, 3.6. Right. So it'll be a cool well, friend of mine had one. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I didn't, and, I didn't and, know if you had an EV or not, is what I'm thinking. Uh, so uh, we have few folks in our office who have EVs. Uh, so we we do bank on their experiences, and then uh, uh, if we have uh, we if we have a snow snowy season in Michigan, and then if you're trying to travel up north where there's any charging infrastructure placed, uh, I would rather take my ice vehicle than the EV. And that that's how it plays in the consumer psyche. I mean, they would buy an EV, but many consumers who tend to buy EV. Uh, also, our typical affluent consumers, I mean, they can't afford to have two vehicles in their household. One could be EV, one could be an ICE, and then they can pick between which one they want to drive if they are going for a longer uh, longer distance drive. And, uh, and they can afford the charging system for the home as well. That is a big factor. Yeah, because very big. Commercial charging. Yep. If you look at the chart, I mean, it's it's at times it's more expensive to charge uh, cars in, uh, at commercial um, boots, and then we just at times we don't have them enough and then some of the new epa standards you probably would have noted uh that was recently released by the by, by the federal government uh they expect that ev sh uh, share of sales to go up uh, around 30 percent in the u.s as of right now only eight percent of the cars that were sold in in the u.s as of last quarter well shay do you see do you see more charging systems going in for the public like at a a, a restaurant or maybe a big box store because i do see those here in the in the houston area the markets that i go to uh, weekly some of the new constructions there's new clinics there's new car dealerships there's new whatever the case but they're allowing for and it's part of the construction of an ev section in the parking lot be it at the side of the building the back of the building or wherever but that's all being incorporated into the new builds that i see now going on here in the houston area that's a very good point because uh, we have also noted that any new construction they are considering how they can bring in the ev uh charging infrastructure so we have noted some new parking structures for instance here in michigan right they do have some spots for uh, for maybe a half a floor is dedicated to EV uh, vehicles or some big uh, grocery stores they have. But then, again, the U.S. is such a huge, it's such a big country. And then the way the auto industry is set up, uh, you have a franchise system and then it's based on three tier. Not The adoption will look very different for an urban community such as Houston uh, compared to a community here in Lansing or 
in mid-sized cities and in other parts of the, of the country. Um, so it, it depends on what type of growth we are noticing in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Houston is, is, is a growing region compared to, let's just say, I would say, um, Baltimore or, or, or Detroit. Right. The growth is still there, but it's not as among us as compared well, to. Well, Houston being an energy capital of the United States and possibly the world and beyond, um, that, that this is sort of a different take because of being oil, drill, 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 and then now you've got the, uh, the electrical side of it or the uh, EV side of it. So that's kind of being incorporated. I think Houston's actually kind of leading in some respect on getting that built through the infrastructure rather than just a typical city somewhere, maybe a smaller town, uh, maybe a smaller town in West Texas or maybe somewhere else in the United States in the flyover country. But I see yeah. that more and more now here in Houston as well. I, that's a very good point because I I was in Salt Lake City uh, a few few months ago and I did note that the infrastructure, um, charging infrastructure was 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 seemed robust. I mean it was, but again I mean the average or typical household income in Salt Lake City is very different from a typical household income uh, in a city like Detroit. On, uh, on, on and, the other and, on the other side of that, there's also gas stations being built quite frequently from here from the studio a here to my house there's probably three corners that there's new gas stations going up and that's that's incredible because there's on the four corners of the street three of them have gas stations so and they're all different brands make sizes some are the you know you walk in and buy stuff and, and others are just uh, the pumps so that's kind of relating to it too so there's growth on both the gas side and the ev side now who's going to win I, I don't know i don't know if if I, my take is the adoption is going to happen, it, it's 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 a, it's a it's a f I won't say it's a f new technology. It's a, it's it's a technology that the auto industry has been testing for a number of years. People will start embracing EVs, but then you cannot just force upon EV um, on on any individual. Uh, that's that's a trend we have noted in the past couple of years. Uh, as of right now, what we have noted as of uh, last quarter sales. Uh, less than half a million sales presented battery electric vehicles wow. in the U.S. I'm talking do, about. Do you think that that is because of the charging infrastructure, or do you think it's the price of the vehicles, or the price of interest on the loans that you have to get? Because average price of a vehicle now is fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and you know above that comes the, for the most part, the EV. And I don't know, I, I, you know, with the way that the infrastructure is, that's an awful lot of money to pay for rolling the dice and seeing if, whether or not you like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned, I think all those three factors do play a role. Uh, the price, yes, average transaction price of, of a standard vehicle in the U.S. Uh, is about $47,000. It has started to come down from forty-eight or $49,000. But the average transaction price of a new EV is still around fifty-four, fifty-three thousand dollar ballpark. But then that's predominantly because of how Tesla has brought their prices down. Yeah. And most of the BEV sales that we note are coming from Tesla. I mean Mac E and then Cadillac and, and Hyundai. I mean they they're making they experiencing some growth in their sales, but it's it would be hard to catch up with Tesla in the next few years. That's my understanding. However, some of the new battery plants or uh, that are being constructed across the country, uh, it may play a factor, let's just say five or six years from now, when those plants start to turn up all those batteries and then um, we will see increase uh, lineup of EV vehicles presented by each, uh, each OEM. As of right now, there are not enough EVs from legacy brands in the US, especially the big three. Um, and then when they do, the big question is, are people going to like them, enjoy them, buy them, and drive them for a longer period of time so right. that you tend to pass it on to the next generation, which is the EV adoption? Well, I've been a big proponent of uh, hi hi uh, hybrid vehicles, and uh, I see that General Motors 
has kind of backed up just a little bit and said, oh, you know, we're not going to do away with uh, all of the hybrids just yet. We are going to reintroduce hybrids to the mix because I think that they realize that there is a a tweener that is going to really be uh, drawn to a vehicle like a hybrid as opposed to a full EV. Mm-hmm. Shay, it's great to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Anderson Economic Group, where can we find more information from them? You can always visit our website. However, uh, our CEO, Patrick Anderson, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's pretty active on, on social media such as LinkedIn. He was recently quoted multiple times on, uh, um, on Wall Street Journal and other publications. But he, I told him yesterday that I'm coming to your show he told me to say hi to you guys, and he wants to come back next time uh, we get an invitation. So You bet. Always a, <laughs> an open door. Give us a call anytime you got some new news for us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys, and enjoy the nice warm weather. And if you need, we can sum some ice. No, we're, <laughs> we're, we're good. We'll send yeah, some yeah. warm temperatures up Don't forget up to there. wear your mucklucks today. Your mucklucks. There you go. Shay, thank you again. Shay Manowar with uh, Anderson Economic uh, Group. Okay. All right, time now on the Inwill Time Car Talk Show for the cruise-in calendar. Okay, here we go. Jeffrey has that. All right, I do. Uh, there's one going on right now. This came into me late this, this past week, but uh, it's going on right now. It's a cruise to uh, Coons Park. Uh, event you got to meet they, they were supposed to meet in cleveland at the brookshire brothers uh in cleveland and then they drove out they're going to meet up with the wild horse mustang club which they're probably doing right about now and then they're going to be listening the, to this show yeah and listening to the show and they're going to go to the picket house cruise so that promises to be a good event also today going on in just a few moments it's going to start at 10 a.m till 5 p.m it's get low houston it's at 26 427 peden road in magnolia which is a bit of a cruise but i see the weather outside is clearing up very nicely and again it goes to 5 p.m so tomorrow uh, is the test and tune again at Houston Motorsports Park. We'll keep saying that until they don't have it. Uh, it is from noon to 8 p.m. tomorrow. And then also tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., you got the Savage Sunday Exotic Car Show 2 in the Heights. And it is at 1213 West 20th Street in Houston, Texas. It goes from 2 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. Erotic, it's, wait a minute. It's the erotic... What is it again? No, it's the, the exotic. Oh, car exotic! Show. Sorry, oh, my no, mistake. no, 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 exotic. <laughs> the erotic, not erotic. That's right. that's Monday. Monday. Yeah, it's the Monday show. Great. I <laughs> uh, got some stories to tell you about <clears throat> making car news this week. We get our news from Automotive News. If you ever wanted to dress like a mechanic or show support for Ford Motor Company, they need it. Uh, You can get it in distressed denim. The automaker has partnered with apparel company Forever 21. I know you visit there quite frequently, don't you? Well, I'm a little bit older than that. Uh, Well, I don't know. Uh, You you act like a teenager many days. Uh, You can go to Forever 21. More like maybe tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) And the erotic show. The limited edition fashion collection that Ford Ford said reintroduces today's generation to a bygone era of quintessential Americana that saw car culture at the forefront. Notice they said that in past tense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Products in the 28-piece collection available online and in stores now range from a 1799 rhinestone graphic t-shirt and Gloria Vanderbilt jeans. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> looking at me. When it's... Come yeah, on now. Some of those chick jeans, you know, those tight ones that you wear, what those low riders. Skinny jeans. Skinny jeans with yeah. rhinestones. So the 1799 rhinestone graphic t-shirt to 79.99 unisex Mustang coveralls. That's for you, Jeffrey. <laughs> Shirtless coveralls. <laughs> the various shirts, pants, jackets, hats, and sweatshirts feature either the blue oval logo in just the right place. Where do you put it? Or graphics of the Mustang sports car on Bronco SUVs. Forever 21 of Los Angeles has about 400 stores nationwide. Not anymore. You'll find <laughs> Jeffrey making personal visits there beginning this afternoon. <laughs> Sorry, I make myself laugh. I just can't help it. <laughs> He'll be modeling the uh, the coveralls. The coveralls. We're gonna cut them off and make some. <laughs> there, and there's there's Shorts no there's no mention of chaps. Oh Lord, where's he? You know the kind I you're talking about. I know exactly about. which kind you're talking about. 
Oh, my Lord. <laughs> God. <laughs> <clears throat> I just have that vision. <laughs> no, I don't. I do. Please. I do. With you in Save some cut off coveralls. We just lost 13 countries <laughs> <laughs> on, on the broadcast. <laughs> on the broadcast. <laughs> Speaking of Ford Motor Company, a glut of late arriving 23 models have driven Lincoln Motor Company inventory uh, to the highest levels in the industry, promoting the brand to boost incentives and use other strategies to help dealers sell down the remaining backlog. Matter of fact, I've been seeing commercials for the Lincoln Navigator, and uh, good luck. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lincoln had more than four months worth of inventory at the end of February, more than any other brand outside of those owned by Stellantis, according to Cox Automotive. About one third of its unsold vehicles were from the previous model year. Go buy an old car. Yeah. Company data shows that Lincoln's February gross stock of 33,000 vehicles was nearly triple that of a year earlier. Officials pin the high levels on a confluence of factors. That's a confluence, mm -hmm. like they have on a river. Yeah. Including a continued normalization of supply after years of shortages. A months-long stop sale on the aviator for a defective rear-view camera system, coupled with a 26-day UAW strike at the Chicago plant, where it's built. Boo-hoo. <laughs> it delayed shipments to the dealers until late in the year. Oh, a later-than-expected no. launch of the freshened Corsair over software issues in early 23 also played a role. It's actually a good-looking vehicle. <sighs> Among the deals available to Lincoln buyers... According to uh, a gentleman named Poulos, I guess it's a dealership here in Houston. Well, he owns West Point Lincoln. Uh, he said 0.9% interest for 60 months on the 2023 Nautilus and the 2.9% for 60 months on 2023 Aviators. Poulos, who owns West Point Lincoln in Houston, said 2023 models accounted for roughly 40% of his February sales and that he expected to be sold out of them by the end of May. Hmm. Hurry on over to your local Lincoln dealer today. Yep. Just thought I'd bring that up. And Ferrari was accused in a U.S. lawsuit of failing to fix a dangerous safety defect with the brakes in some of its sports cars, despite issuing multiple recalls. Recalls were no more than an interim corrective measure for one of the identified brake problems, leaving thousands of Ferrari drivers in unsafe vehicles, according to the proposed class action suit filed wow. Monday in the U.S. District Court in San Diego. California res resident Ilya Nechev, not a local, claims that 2010, his 2010 Ferrari 458 Italia, which he bought in 2020, had brake issues from the day he got it and would experience partial or total loss of braking capability. Yikes. Mm. Ferrari is accused of not notifying customers of the full extent of the brake defect, which Nechev says could only be fixed by replacing the master cylinder. Instead, the company continued to sell or benefit from the sale of thousands of cars containing this life-threatening defect, according to the complaint. So you own a Ferrari, you need to fix it. All right. It's number three. All right. <clears throat> that would be, huh? Number three break. Number three. Mm -hmm. hmm. Oh, okay. Well, uh, time now for a quick break here. It's not going to be too quick, but we'll be right back on the Inville Time Car Talk Show after this. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation base. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? 
In Real Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at GodsGarage.org. Mika Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Meekum.com. Hey, I wanted to remind everybody that uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes, we're going to have John Craman from Meekum Auction Houston, and he'll be talking about the uh, uh, big event coming your way in a couple of weeks, actually less than two weeks. And it's always great to talk to him because he has insight on automotive, that uh, you don't get from anywhere else. But we're going to talk to him after another quick break. Stay with us. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. It's the end wheel time car talk show. Meekum Auction is less than two weeks away. You ready? Yep. John Craman gives us a preview. Also, Jeff has this week's racing calendar, and Mr. Morris has an in-depth review of the new Infinity QX55. Today's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is sponsored by Houston Meekum Auction, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars. Uh, we always need more Jeff yeah. Zekin. And I am Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us today. It's a beautiful day in Houston, Texas. Let's find out where John Kramer is. Where are you, John? Where are you at, John? Where are you? What? Uh oh. We can't hear you. Are you you're muted. You got your thing muted. You've got you got Uh oh, something's not working. Hold yeah. that back up. Are you unmuted? Mike is not working. Is are you? Uh, you gotta unmute yourself because I got you potted up here, and I can't. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh. Now here is a broadcaster deluxe, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we're gonna go back to this until we can get that straightened out. Oh, okay. 
Well, there you, you, guys, you guys work on that. But I will tell you this, that uh, the uh, Mecham auction is coming, as you've heard, mm-hmm. uh, in the commercial, uh, April 4th through the 6th. Get your tickets early. Houston Mecham auction. You know one of the interesting things that Mars pointed out, and I should have mentioned it myself, uh, but he beat me to it. It is a car show. Yeah. At the, it's an auction and a car show because you're, you're going to find these vehicles at a cruise in. You're not going to generally find them at a car show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a judged event, but with do re me on the line because yeah. you, know, you got to bid for it. And we were at the convention, the Galveston Convention Center last weekend, and we actually shared uh, some time in a booth and space with the Meekum folks that were there. Very nice people, yep. right. uh, and they were they were able to give us some kind of insights on that. And uh, I actually watched the Meekum broadcast. It was a couple weeks ago uh, when it was on the the uh, Motor Trend TV. I watched some of the Thursday, and I was in awe and in love with some of the things that were going across because they were my style and my budget, and I'm thinking, I, I, I want all these. So that's the kind of thing that early on you look at it, and then you build up to the next day, and then you build up to the final day, and you got all the, the big stuff and the, and the real. Well, you know, I, back in my day, I was really never interested in auctions because the auction, the whole auction thing has evolved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It used to be that auctions were for the big guys, the guys with the multi-million dollar cars that I never had a chance of getting a bid in on. But then Meekums has kind of have brought it all to uh, a, a new level to my level, the common guy, the common guy, yeah, yeah, that's what not, I see. Not, not to not to rule out the fact that they don't have some big expensive right. cars yeah, there. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is the it is the every man's car show, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. And those that interests me more. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate some of those antiques and uh, some of the cars that, uh, for instance, exotics that, uh, and things. Yeah, that. Uh, uh, Chasing classic cars, mm-hmm. Wayne Carini, that, yeah. that he builds and takes. The Concord to, type vehicle. Yeah, yeah Concord de Elegance. And I got all that. I get it. And, you know, the Pebble Beaches and all of the, those kinds of cars, there's, uh, there's really something to be said for those. But I also like, you know, the Resto Mod that somebody else has bought that they bought from another person and it, it's a continuation of development of a resto mod yeah or a completely stock vehicle barn finds all these different kinds of cars that you could possibly imagine and let's not forget the collections and Meekum usually has somebody's collection mm-hmm. that they're going to sell yep be it and, five cars or a hundred cars yeah there's a collection going on yeah i like it because you've got the the 87 cruiser vista with panel wood grain on the side, <laughs> yes. I tear up when I see those. Yeah, yeah, like the Roadmaster, the yeah. Roadmaster wagon. Did you, you get him? Uh, we're, we're still working on that. The estate wagon. I was thinking about the last time we actually did a remote at the Meekum auction, and we went looking at some of the cars. And I remember, I it just, I always remember there was a black thirty-two high boy there, and and I thought, you know, did it, it was speak a, to you? Well, it was really a nice car, but you know. Because it's Meekum, and you can get up and look close. You don't have all these pylons and a display to get to. You know, you could get up to it, and the engine compartment, you could see some rust on some of the chrome and stuff that, you know, it was somebody's collection. But, but it's a driver. It's a driver. I mean, it was obviously Well, it was a driver, drive or it was an old restoration that needed an update. Yeah. And, you know, if it shows like that, then chances are you're going to be able to buy it less well, than that what was, it was really worth. That was my thought. That was one of my thought. Me, and if I'd have been registered, I might have actually had a shot at getting that car. Last year when I went, there was a van there, and it had 1970s written all over it. Oh, with yeah. The, with the shag carpeting on the inside. I think and the, they rolled a couple through like the that. The mod look. Yeah. You know, with the with the orange and the green teardrop the window blues. on the side yeah. and then you got the little vent on the top yes. that opens up backwards you saw the same one that i did i wanted one when i was going up <laughs> <laughs> well wouldn't that be fun to drive uh, around for a while today and today, today yeah. oh that was but you'd, you'd have to buy it at the right price if you bought it at the right price, not to make any money off of it, but when you got tired of it, you know, in a year from now and you want to get rid of it, put it back in the auction, let them sell it again, and then find yourself something else. I would find one that would be 99.9% done then just drive it. Just you know, just drive it. Yeah. yeah. Just, just have it ready I, to I go. Listen, uh, my, my thought for you would be the... Park Avenue Estate Wagon by I'm, Buick I'm with, in. The, with the wood sides I'm on in. it. I'm in, yeah. 
That would be. I would drive it every day. I guess it would be what uh, early nineties. Mm, yeah, early night. Uh, a late, the latest model that you could buy. I like would make that. excuses to drive. Yeah. yeah. No, you you drive it back and forth to work. Yeah. People would go, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Mm. You know that. Yeah. Hey, man, roll it down. What year is that? Man, I sure do like that car. Or if Kathy cooking in the kitchen, I need an onion. I'll go get it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah not the Kroger. Yeah, yeah. But you go to the Kroger in uh, Dallas, and then you drive back. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I, there's a, a thousand cars. And they're all in NRG Center. Yeah. And they're all parked far enough apart that you, if you wanted to, you could take your creeper, yeah, get on the floor and get underneath it, look it all over if you know that's mm-hmm. what you wanted yep. to do. Um, if you could find the owner, then you could ask him all sorts of questions. I mean, I, it's I, it's all I'm all about it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And well, they've got a booklet too. Don't, they put them in a book that you can oh, actually yeah. look at the it's, a little bit of the the details of the vehicle what it has in it the horsepower if if they list it color the car everything uh, duration of, of, yeah. of, of and, a, if, and if you find yourself in dubai somewhere and you want to bid on it you get on the phone and make a phone bid yeah because yeah. they take that as well yep yep marzi you're pointing at something well but I, i'm not I think, sure what that I think is john uh, uh, john's back we've logged out logged back but I, i'm not sure that we john can i hear you john no, no. we can't John, on the invitation that we sent you for the Zoom, there's a phone number. Use that. Call us. And we'll just talk. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. We'll look for you. <clears throat> All right. I'm sure it's... He can it, hear us. So he said, give me a thumbs up on calling yeah, yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Good. We just can't hear him. But at any rate, we're, we're going to. In the meantime, I've got some more uh, Hemmings online auction stuff. All right. Uh, Shelby... Yeah. 500 kr that's a real race car Mm -hmm. 2008 model what do you think that that sold for at hemmings 47775 wow i was gonna shout out 60 but 47 is good yeah i was gonna go for 75 here's one for you mars a 1961 nissan patrol (sighs) you'd look really good looking running around nederland in this yeah but i think it'd be probably uh kind of pricey probably around 16 no 22 Oh, well. It looks like it's fully restored, and it's that boring beige color. Is that what you call it, patrolling? It's it's called a Nissan Patrol. Okay. If it had an E in there, it would be petrol, but in Ah. this case, it's patrol. How about a 1952 Chevrolet 3100 fully restored pick-em-up truck? Blue and white with wide whites on it. 32. 32? What year was it? uh, That would be a 1952. Thirty-one hundred. I guess the thirty-one hundred would be like the three-quarter. Three-quarter ton. ton. Yeah, I would say eighteen. Really, it sold for twenty-nine four. Dang, oh, yeah. I am so far off. Uh, Seventy-eight Chevy Silverado. Here's a bargain. We assume it looks good. It's got all cleaned up and everything with those great big humongous bolt-on side view mirror on the driver's side. Seventy-eight Chevy Silverado sold for fourteen nine sixty. I was going to go under ten. <clears throat> um, here's one. I was kind of surprised at this. A 2008 BMW Z4M, uh, which is the hot-rodded version of the BMW Z4, which was a sports car that they built back in the day. A 2008 model sold for $26,250. That was a very expensive car when that was brand new. Mm. Uh, here's one from Nederland, 1952 Ford. <laughs> Pardon me? Did you fall out of the chair <laughs> over there? did. <laughs> a 1952 Ford F1 sold price of eighteen thousand one thirteen. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm not a big Ford pickup truck fan mm-hmm. of that decade. Yeah, but uh, eighteen one thirteen seems like a deal. It's uh, it looks like it's a fully restored vehicle. And last but not least, this would be for you, Jeff, a 1949 Desoto Custom. And mm. it is painted bright fuchsia green, okay? Ooh. And it looks uh, completely stock and is very ugly. And well, it's sold it's for $2,800. Fuchsia green is not stock. There it is. Yeah. Two, oh, that's... $2,800. It's ugly. I, is yeah, it? I wouldn't give you a dollar for that. No. Thing. What is that? Is that one of those air conditioning No, I thought it looks side? like a window, some kind of window treatment. Oh, Lord. I don't know. I, I don't know why AC. anybody would buy that, but somebody did. Mm-hmm. I guess as a joke to give to somebody, I hate you. 
the I hate, <laughs> the I hate you club, or the, the, maybe it was a settlement in a divorce or something. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that would be the way to go yeah, about it. Here, little you little have little. the car. Yep, yep, yep. You want to do racing since we got time? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Let's do okay. racing. Okay. Well, um, I picked up some IMSA stuff. WeatherTech IMSA. Uh, they've got some things going on next month which would be the Long Beach Street Circuit, April 19th and the 20th. Which is usually ahead of the IndyCar race. Yes, it? it is. And we talk, well, you talk about Indy. I'm an Indy fan, too. Formula One's not that my greatest uh, forte. Uh, speaking of which, Formula One, you've got uh, the 21st through tomorrow, the Australian Grand Prix. There's already controversy with teams and prima donnas and who, you know, the, Donna, Donna, the, the prima, prima Donna, 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 Donna. And then we've got uh, our special friend which is erica enders who took uh gainesville they're back on the track uh tomorrow this weekend pomona. yep pomona is the lucas oil nhra winter nationals pomona it is on that channel no one seems to get all the time it's at 7 p.m the rebroadcast and then uh we've got circuit of the americas for nascar they ran the trucks last night they're going to run the xfinity today and then the cup tomorrow that's going on there. What is that going to be on uh, CBS or it something? It will be on, I believe it's on Fox, the normal channel. Mike, there's still tickets available if you want to head out there. And then you've got the Indy Racing Car Series, again, in conjunction with the IMSA stuff going on. Um, yeah, you got the 24th, which is tomorrow, the Million Dollar Challenge. Million Dollar to be Challenge. To be determined on uh, the time, but it's going to be uh, on NBC. So there you go. That's going to be that. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. And podcasts are available from your favorite podcast provider. We also video stream our three-hour show, our weekly show, on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show will continue right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through ProAm.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at GodsGarage.org. Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Mecham experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Mecham.com. Welcome back to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Do we have uh, John? Are you there? You got me, guys. <laughs> oh my God! It's a it. miracle. <laughs> well, you know, it's that phone. Are, are you in California? I actually, I am in California. Uh, before I head over to Houston, I'll be in California, and I'll also be up in Minneapolis, St. Paul. So, 
I'm on a heck of a heck of a, uh, a trip right now. But I got to tell you guys, we're looking forward to getting over to Houston. I think I'm having a bit of a tro- problem with my computer getting a microphone to work. I think it's an internal mic problem. So promise next time I'll get that fixed. But, uh, yeah, obviously really getting cranked up our next auction, Houston. Man, can you believe it was 2012 was our first time there. So we'll be celebrating 13 years in Houston, one of the real hotbed electric cars. Wow. For sure. So um, <clears throat> we were talking, by, well, you were trying to dial, uh, <laughs> that we usually have a Mecham auction collection that is sold. You guys have some sort of collection from somebody. Is it going to be one this year? Well, how about seven, guys? Is that uh, check off that box? Oh, my for you? God. Uh, seven, seven collections? Yeah. Yeah, and that's becoming more and more of a trend at Mecham Auctions as uh, as we continue to um, uh, gain visibility in the clutcher car world. It really has become a really great source for folks not only to sell just you know one car or buy one car, but also to sell and buy collections. And Plendel Collection is our is our rock star of all the collections, primarily black Chevrolets, a lot of low mileage original cars. Hmm. But, you know, the, the entire lineup at Mecham Houston this year is about as deep as we've ever had. Um, you know, pre-war classics and 50s, chrome and fin area, muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks are a huge part of the market. But now we're seeing more and more exotics and more and more late model vehicles and typically specialty vehicles like late model Mustangs and Challengers, Chargers, uh, you know, Camaros. So obviously a really great lineup really encourage everybody to come on out you don't have to be a buyer or anybody can come out by a 30 dollar ticket kids 12 and under free and you know join in on the action we'd really appreciate it well one of the things that we said uh, as well is the fact that you know even if you're not a buyer it is a great car show well and that's a good point you know i've had people tell me uh that it's the best car show they've ever attended. And I like to say, well, it's because it's a car show with a pulse. Now, nothing against car shows. I love them. I go to them. I take my cars to them. And I love, you know, hanging out, looking at cars, talking to the folks. But there's something very alive and vibrant and exciting about being at a Mecham auction. Hopefully many of your listeners have tuned in and have at least seen us on television. Now our 17th year of television, by the way, we're on Motor Trend. But um, it's there is something special about being there, being caught up in the noise and the excitement, the colors, and the fact that, you know, every 90 seconds or so, there's a completely different car that comes up onto the Mecham red carpet. And with around 1,000 cars there, you know, you hear it all the time, something for everyone. But you'll see cars, uh, folks that, you know, will tell, will see cars that they remember back in the past. Uh, and they'll also see cars maybe that they never even knew existed. It's, it's, it's that much of a variety. And everything is moving. And there's a lot of folks there, and it's just really fun to see millions and millions and millions of dollars of collector cars change hands. Well, it's really pick, like pick, you know, pick up the pick up the uh, actual magazine, not magazine, but the book that has all the cars in it. Follow along and go get yourself a seat and a great grandstand right there in front of all the cars. I mean, it, it's a show. Yeah. It's almost like a Vegas show. There's always something going on. Light I don't know if I'd go that far. The well, only, I mean, well only when John puts yeah. on that feather boa. <laughs> yeah. Now we'll get you guys. So we got you guys. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you guys set it up for some uh, costumes this year. Oh, great! But no, you know the point is the point that we really want to make is is you know everybody uh, in the area is welcome to attend. We really encourage spectators. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, somebody will come in and they're not thinking they want to buy a car, but they come in as a spectator and they see something that they like. And it's really surprisingly easy and straightforward to get registered as a bidder if you happen to see something that, you know, somebody wants. But John, um, walk us through that. You know, how does yeah, that how does, gonna how, do, how does that work? If you go there, you didn't really intend to bid on something, but you see something that really yep. draws your attention to it. I'm going, hey, I will bet you I can afford that. How do you get registered at the show? Yeah, it's surprisingly straightforward, and I guess that probably wouldn't surprise you that we're not going to make people jump through too many hoops to get registered as a bidder. Uh, bidder registration fee is $200, and we do require a uh, valid uh, driver's license. And uh, we don't take credit cards for payment. We take a personal check, 
And you just go ahead, you sign up, and you pay the fee, and we take a copy of your driver's license to keep on our file. You get entered into the system. You get a bidder number and a bidder badge. And should you be the winning bidder, you simply uh, take the bid sheet that the bidder uh, uh, folks uh, bring out to you immediately after the hammer comes down and the individual's a winning bidder. Uh, you sign the sheet and you take that sheet into the office and you write out a check and you pay for the car and you literally remove it same day if you want. Uh, you don't have to get it out the same day. If you're buying multiple cars or you're going to be coming back the second day, that's okay. But we, we try to get people to come in at, uh, at the end of the day or even better, right after they buy the car just to sort of keep the huge volume flowing and then you take the car with you we give you a gate pass we hold titles for two weeks waiting for all the checks to clear and uh you you take the vehicle home that same day it's very very straightforward and i will tell you it's addicting and a lot of fun so jeff has got his eyes on <laughs> a 1995 <laughs> buick estate wagon with some uh, cheap wood paneling down the side of it that glue on stuff and, you know, oh, yeah. it, it's almost like the Vista Visions of the Oldsmobile I days. I love it. I love it. And I'm thinking, you know, I'll bet you he could probably find something like that there. Well, it's, you know, funny you mention that because the 80s and 90s shirt certainly had no shortage of kitsch. Yep. And station wagons, now kind of gone, but, uh, you know, SUVs of the modern era, station wagon. But fake wood grain trim, fake wire wheels, and white wall tires. Yeah, I mean, baby. That was the look. Yeah. And yes. They surprisingly nostalgia being a powerful motivator you, uh, has has been drawing out those family kitschy vehicles and they they're surprisingly popular. You rolled one through on Thursday. The last last uh, television show you had, uh, they rolled one through. I saw it and I was intently watching what it went for. And I think it went for somewhere in the twenty or twenty two thousand really? dollars. So when this this episode in Houston, if you see one, John, I want you to mention me on the air that I could own that. <laughs> station wagons, uh, station wagon fans. All there right. you go. That's a deal. You got it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can only imagine. We were we were making well. We were trying to connect with you today. We were making fun of the fact that last year we saw it had to have been a '70s van, a conversion van, and it had the shag carpet in it. And as Jeff pointed out, that teardrop rear window in there. It was 70s it was all the way. Yeah, all we needed was a pair of those knee-high disco boots, and we were in. Yep. Some gold chains. Well, and again, that's another that's another segment. Uh, you know, folks that weren't around back in the day may not know, but 70s and even in the 1980s, uh, customized bands yes. really were kind of overtaking the the uh, kind of the hot rodding world. In fact, you go back and look at some vintage. Hot Rod and Carcraft magazines from back in that time period, and there's a lot of how-tos on how to install those teardrop rear windows yep. and the the aftermarket sunroofs and how to customize the interiors. And everyone, and of course, very few of those have survived. I mean, they are just gone. And the murals but when they do again. I mentioned nostalgia. If we get a nice one, they will get a surprising amount of a surprising amount of attention. Well, I can certainly understand that. I know that uh, Danny had uh, had a, a, a '60s Ford Econoline van that was worn completely out, and he didn't have any money to fix up the interior, so it was completely bare. Mm. He went to Kmart, bought the Blue Light Special lawn chairs, and that's what we put in the back of it. And that's what we <laughs> rolled around. That's what we rolled around town in. Oh, man, times have changed, right? <laughs> and, uh, autonomous driving and all of that stuff kind of churning. And, and it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing those of us that, that are of a certain age that were there back in the day. It's really kind of amazing we've all survived. <laughs> Absolutely. John, so uh, is it MecumAuction.com? <laughs> yeah, Mecum.com for lots of information. I uh, want to give a shout-out to uh, all of our viewers out there. We've got 12 hours Live television coverage. If you can't make it to the auction, and that will be kicked, that will be twelve to six, both on on the Friday and the Saturday, the the two last days of the auction, and that is on Motor Trend TV, your cable channel, part of Discovery. And we're debuting breaking news. You're the first guys to hear it. Uh, Mecham Auctions now will be broadcasting on Max. This will yes. be the very first auction. Our launch into Max. So that'll be simulcasted with the traditional source on uh, Motor Trend TV. 
And for those of you that are listening that uh, want to click on Max, we, we'll be there for the very first time. So really excited about that. Well, it's good to partner with you guys in the advertising side of things, and uh, we really appreciate your support on this show and your involvement with us. And thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you, John. Oh, man, guys, always a pleasure. And, uh, you know, bring your checkbooks. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. That's uh John Craman with Meekum Auctions, uh, coming your way April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Yeah, it's going right. to be if fun. You, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address here is info at inwheeltime.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook. We're back after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggieland? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. It's the End Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Ahead, John Vincent, U.S. News, and the 2024 Best Cars for Families Awards. All right. Later, this week's Cars on TV, along with stories making automotive news headlines. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. So glad you could join us on this beautiful Saturday outside in Houston, Texas. If you're listening on a podcast, thank you very much. And join our live show on Saturday mornings between 8 and 11 a.m. And uh, If you will... subscribe, you get all kinds of other information that we'll send you as well. Yeah. And we don't sell your email address, nay, nay, we don't do that. Mm-hmm. So uh, feel free to do that. Uh, if you would, please sign up with us. We'd love to have yep. you. Speaking of... Uh, Uh, Good things. U.S. News has a a 2024 report on the best cars for families awards. And joining us now is John Vince. And, John, it's good to see you again. How are you, my friend? Hello, John. Uh Uh-oh. Got to unmute, John. Sorry. There we go. Nice to see you guys again. Hey, thank you for very much for uh, joining us today. Okay. Uh, Let's see. U.S. News announces the 2024 Best Cars for Families. Before we get to that, let's go over the criteria for yours, your report and, and what you kind of went by to judge these cars. So for Best Cars for Families, we look at not only a car's overall scores in our rankings and review system, but we also look at things like cargo space, uh, technology that's family-friendly, um, Teen driver systems uh, that can uh, let you monitor your your teen driver behind the wheel. Um, even things like a hand, hands-free lift gate that you know make things easier for families. So we look at that kind of stuff. It's all data driven. We don't just throw darts at a dartboard and pick out the best cars for families. We actually look at what the data tells us. Now, are all of these 2024 models? These are all 2024 models. Very nice. Okay. How long did it take you guys to compile this? 
I work with a bunch of uh, really smart researchers, and uh, <laughs> so do they I. Take a few months to put all this stuff together. A few months, yeah. So I understand that you evaluated ninety vehicles. Oh my gosh, uh, that's that's a lot. I, I would be like <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm going, my God, I don't know what to live or turn here. I can only yep, ima- yeah, imagine what you went through. They uh, they work very hard at this uh, yeah. to get it. Okay, so uh, let's. How do you want to start? Do you want to start with brands or vehicles specifically? How do you want to work this? Let's just work our way down the list. Let's start with the best two row midsize SUVs for families. All right. And that's the Honda Passport. The Honda Passport. Uh, that is that is that a minivan? No, the Honda Passport is essentially a two row version of the Honda Pilot. Gotcha. Um, it's slightly lifted. You know, the the Passport's just a vehicle that you know might not stand out in any one area, but does everything well. Well, Hondas usually do, don't you agree? Exactly. Kind yeah. of bulletproof, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, they're kind of pricey. Well, I say pricey. They're usually priced over and above their competitors by uh, two, three thousand dollars. You agree? A little bit, yeah. They're yeah. they're a little bit of a premium uh, mark out there. Yeah. Um, Let's see. So let's do the best three-row mid-size SUV for families. And that's the Kia Telluride. Um, you know, the Kia Telluride wins a lot of awards, and it wins them because it's that good. It does everything well. Um, it's in its uh, kind of 1.5 version, 1.5 generation. They just uh, refreshed it, and uh, they made a great SUV even better. Before we move on, I did want to mention that uh, I see here that you also have hybrids, you also have uh, electrics, you've got uh, full-size uh, SUVs, uh, body-on-frame style, and yep. uh, you also got some cars here. Okay, so let's continue on. Best compact SUV for sa- families. And that's a very crowded segment that has yes, a lot is. of great vehicles in it. And for this award, we picked the uh, 2024 Hyundai Tucson. And, you know, let me just interject this. that To me, a compact is really, it's really not a compact the way I think of a compact. I know that I'm old, but back in the day, a compact car was the smallest car the manufacturer made. That's not the case anymore. Um, that That's across the board. I mean, try and put a compact Chevy Colorado pickup truck in your garage. It's not compact anymore. Yeah, exactly. So the Hyundai Tucson. So Hyundai and Kia, they're right up there at the top, number two and number three. That's basically the same company, just different um, brands. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like to think of Kia as the Pontiac and Hyundai as the Buick. Interesting. Hmm. That's an interesting. Okay, yeah, I get you. All right. uh, Best hybrid car for families. And this is no Camry, surprise. Camry Hybrid. The Camry Hybrid. And in its I, last year of the current generation, it still was able to win. Well, that doesn't surprise me uh, because, you know, <clears throat> they're hybrid. They have been working on a hybrid system since the beginning of the Prius. And that dates back to, what, uh, 2010? 20, oh, no, 2000. Course. Yeah, yeah, about two thousand, I think, is somewhere in there when they started the Prius, and it's basically the same type of system that they use today. At its heart, it's the same type of system. I mean, it's been changed dramatically. Well, of course, I mean, the new Prius is a an amazing car compared to the original Prius, uh, but the Camry, you know, uses that drivetrain and gives you forty plus mpg out of a sedan, which you know is fantastic. A nice sedan. Yeah, nice it is. Sedan. Yeah, that that Camry has come a long <laughs> way, like the hybrid system, no doubt about it. Okay, best hybrid SUV for families, and this really draws my attention because this is a recently updated or brand new Highlander. Yep, it's the Highlander Hybrid. Uh, the car behind me on the screen here. Um, it's a, uh, you know, it kind of defines what a three row SUV is, and it gives you fantastic mileage. I mean, you look at the Telluride, Telluride's great, but its one weakness is fuel economy. And Toyota fixes that with the Highlander Hybrid, which uh, 
you know, you need to save money for those theme park admissions, and the, the hybrid, <laughs> yeah, the island do. hybrid will let you do that. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite uh, theme park? Uh, Disney World. <laughs> Is it Disney. okay? Yeah, I, I would. I would say I'd agree with you. <clears throat> um, best electric vehicle for families. Now, does this include both cars and SUVs in the uh, category? This one does. Okay. So this is across the board, best electric vehicle for families, and that is? Yes. That is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Another Hyundai. Hmm. Another Hyundai. So Hyundai and Kia, they do something interesting in the way that they design their electric cars. A lot of electric vehicles like the Ford F-150 Lightning have a huge front trunk um, with the Hyundai's and Kia's, instead of doing that, they put their drive electronics up front where the engine would be and use that extra space for a larger cabin. So the Ionic 5 has a huge cabin. You know, there, it's a, an electric, so there's no drive line hump. So even the middle seat in the, in the second row is usable for, you know, normal people. Uh, they just... They package it right for families. Is it is it an SUV or is it a car? It's called an SUV, but <laughs> you know, it's a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that that's why I asked you because I've seen them and I think that I've had one in the press fleet, and it's kind of like a tweener. We it's it not is. it's not one. It's it kind of crosses the lines, and I think that there's a value for that. Okay, let's talk about the best large SUV. Now this is body on frame, I assume. This is the big guy. This is uh, Chevy Suburban. Wow, the yeah, longest running continuous nameplate in the U.S. I believe at this wow. point. Wow, and it has no resemblance to Suburbans of the past. No, not because at all. Because they no. every time that they come out with a, a new version of it, and you go, really, this is a Suburban? I mean, it's <laughs> almost like uh, Cadillacs of old now. Especially at the top end of their lineup, by uh, in the high country suburban, and it's uh, it's lux. Yeah, and it's pushing a hundred thousand dollars or more. That yeah. is true. Um, yeah, well. But there, you know, there's a reason why it's nicknamed the Chevy Subdivision. So <laughs> oh, that, I never heard you that can put before. The biggest family you have in there. Oh, that, wow. that, that's beautiful. Full three row <laughs> family and, subdivision. And, and I'm so glad that they have finally perfected that third row, where you don't have to actually take the third row out of the vehicle to open up the cargo space, and you know exactly what I'm talking and about. One, I know exactly what you're. And one, you also don't need to be be a gymnast to get to that third that's row. That's why it. don't they <laughs> turn the seat around? Yeah, that's the only thing we're lacking is an option to turn the seat around. Turn the so seat around. Face you don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> and he's I laughing. I don't think any any parent wants that again. No, I guess not. Come but, on. Yeah, be, especially now with the uh, with all the uh, shootings and everything, they can't have the kids in the back seat flipping oh. off the uh, the car that's, <laughs> that's behind true. them. You know. That's all true. right. So let's talk about best midsize car for families. And again, midsize is you know it's kind of confusing because to me a midsize today is a full size car. Right, and that is the 2024 Toyota Camry. Hmm. Again, in its last year of its current uh, product cycle, still it's, a great car. So it's um, won two awards. It's best the best hybrid and the straight, I assume, gasoline engine. Why, why, would, why wouldn't the Lexus ES be ahead of that? Uh, because we don't include luxury cars um, in the in our best cars. Yeah, okay. the, right. yeah this, this is, is a family. family. I got you, family. Yeah, All right. Okay. All right, and... The best minivan for families, and I, you know, is I want to say there aren't as many minivans as there once was, but there is competition still out there. Yeah, there aren't as many minivans, but there are, you know, the competition is still strong. It because, is. You know, it's hard to beat a minivan. Once you've had a minivan, you don't want to go to anything else. You know, uh, if somebody, it. somebody asked me, Don, why? What is it about you and the minivan? I like them too. Would I buy one personally? Probably not. Now with the advent and the proliferation of SUVs everywhere, but as far as vehicle dynamics, how it drives, how it rides, mm -hmm. and all of the things that it's capable of doing, it's it's a big box on wheels that has luxury throughout, 
And I would have to say that it would probably be as far as an actual transportation mode for my family, it would have to be a minivan. I'm I'm thinking the Toyota probably, but I would go with the Toyota over the Pacifica. My my opinion. Yeah, the Pacifica one. Um, the Toyota it gets up there in price, and that's uh, that's one issue with well, it. Um, it does have some great features. I mean, all wheel drive, hybrid powertrain, so great mileage. But uh, when look, looking at the overall numbers, the Pacifica wins. Mm, and the Pacifica mm, has some features that nobody else has. You know, it's funny you should say that because the first thing, the first thing that comes to my mind is the, the stow-and-go system. Because yeah. if, if, if you want to use the seats, great. And then that, that little cubby that's underneath the floor works great for luggage. Just flatten them out. Uh, yeah, everything that you could possibly throw underneath there. And still keep it inside the vehicle and go for weeks on a vacation and still have plenty of room for family and all of the luggage and stuff that's in it. Yep. And if you look at a lot of the newer minivans, you can't remove the center row at all. And the Chrysler makes it easy. Yeah. Just flip it into the floor. I think that it's the ultimate. Uh, I don't know about reliability. Um, I would assume that now that it's getting a little bit long in the tooth, although it's still a very attractive vehicle, I would imagine that uh, now that they've worked out all of the bugs that they had originally, because let's face it, it has a lot of technology in it, and it's got yes. all, all of the plugs, you know, the cell phone stuff, uh, the, the, the screens for the kids in the back seat to play their video game, whatever, whatever you want that's in that van. Well, the, the the Chrysler minivan years ago was a leader in that group to begin with. And it started, and yeah. it's got a vacuum cleaner in it. <laughs> and it's got a vacuum cleaner. You got to have and that. The uh, the entertainment screens in back are linked to the navigation system, so the kids can see how how long it is to get there. They can it's follow they along. Keep asking. Yeah, wow. stop it. Are we there yet? Well, Don's a new grandfather. He should get a minivan to take his grandson around. Well, he's only one, so I've got a few uh, years uh, okay. on, on the uh, leash, and well, I'll get one at the Meekum auction. I'm sure. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, John, how fun. Uh, this is uh, this is great fun uh, for everybody to uh, look at, see all of the, the award winners at U.S. News. And um, Hey, John, I have a question. Yep. You said that was a Highlander behind you? Yep. Is it a 25? 24. That's a 24. Yep. I like the way that looks. I keep looking at it over your shoulder there, and, and it just doesn't look like any of the Highlanders I've seen around Well, you're before. not getting one, so you just sit still. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> sooner or later, I'm going to have to buy the wife something. There you go. Well, there, there you have it. Well, I'm a minivan owner, and I love my minivan. There you well, go. I'm yeah. with you, buddy. When yeah. I had one, we, we were doing a lot of freelance work, and it was great to put the photo gear in the back. You lift up the back of it. The girlfriend or wife could sit under there in the shade while I was out there shooting pictures of her husband's and my wife would keep her entertained. It was perfect. <laughs> her husband's. And his wife. Yeah, and his wife. Or his girlfriend, whoever you happen to have at the show. And his girlfriend. Oh my God. You know, it's turning a little sick here now, John, so we, we <laughs> We're appreciate it. let you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. U.S. News 2024 Best Cars for Families. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk again soon. Yeah. Thanks, I hope John. So. That's fun. good stuff. Always good stuff. Yeah, I like that stuff. Uh, the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream our three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. And podcasts at your favorite podcast provider. The End Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? 
In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at GodsGarage.org. Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center, featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Mecham experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Mecham.com. By the way, I wanted to mention that uh, our uh, racing calendar was sponsored by Texas Muscle Car Club Challenge. Thank you for that. I didn't I didn't get that in earlier. It's okay. I, I needed to mention that. It's been a busy day. It's been it busy. Is, yeah, busy, it has busy, been. Busy. And I, you know me, and I get distracted often. Oh, In fact, right. they uh, they have their season opener race tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Where? Yeah. I'm trying to remember where she said it was. Okay, well, it's oh. somewhere. This is a drag racing league, and uh, it's uh, tons of fun. And uh, it's a fun group. And if you're into uh, drag racing, check them out. Texas Muscle Car Club Challenge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would encourage you to do that. Uh, Jeffrey, you want to do Wheels on TV? I've got that. And what I've picked out this week uh, are three movies yeah. that you can watch. Now, Richard Tomlin kind of alluded to one earlier that I've got on here. It's called Formula One, Drive to Survive. Yes, it is in, I believe, its fifth or sixth season. Uh, it is on Netflix. So you subscribe to Netflix. You can go ahead and get it. Uh, you get a look into the lives of the Formula One competitors and all of their drama. Uh, I threw that in there. And the teams. Now it's in its, uh, again, fifth or sixth season. Viewers can go behind the scenes with anything but normal activity. The second one, and I've actually seen this movie. It's called The Lady and the Dale. It's on HBO. It's about Geraldine Elizabeth Liz Carmichael. She got the world's attention with a 70 mile per hour, mile per gallon, I should say, 70 mile per gallon, three-wheeled sedan called The Dale. It couldn't get her company off the ground. It was a big scam. Uh, it is a four-part documentary, so check it out. I liked it. What's it, was it kinda, called? It, it's called The Lady and the Dale. Okay. So check that out. The last one uh, that I think is, is pretty good to watch, and I have seen parts of it, not all of it, is called Framing John DeLorean. It's on a Hulu, Don. It is uh, a look into the life of John DeLorean from the rise of General Motors to his development of the DeLorean sports car. And there's much more behind the scenes of this controversial auto exec than it is also a documentary. So check those things out. Uh, I've seen one and a half of these. They're pretty good. It held my attention. And I have very short attention that, span. That poor guy was set up big time yep. with his cocaine yeah. thing. And well, he was hey. trying to save his company and... Uh, really? Okay. There's, I'm sure there were other ways to do it, but the quick way out isn't always the best way. Yeah, well. So um, He built an iconic car mm-hmm. that is more popular, I think, than it was when it was new. Mm-hmm. Um, and in after his death as well. Yeah. So. Yep. So that's what I got. Okay. Check them out. All right. We shall do that. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I need to do some calculations here. Okay. Uh uh, yeah, okay, I got it. Uh, Tesla's... Inc- <laughs> he Tesla- didn't even take his shoes off. No, I, I know. Didn't. I just oh, had to me. think about it for a second. <laughs> I used to be able to do three and four things at a time. Now it's just one. Oh. Don't do that very well ah, either. Gotcha. Tesla's second generation Roadster will feature, quote, rocket technology, end quote, through a collaboration with aerospace company and twin SpaceX that will allow the sports car to accelerate zero to 60 in under one second. <laughs> According to Elon Musk, (laughs) Musk in an interview released Monday with former CNN journalist Don Lemon, he's still alive, that idiot, suggested the future sports car may be 
can fly. It's not out of the question, Musk said in response to a question. Musk said last month that the new roadster, which was first presented in late 2017, will launch next year. First generation roadster was Tesla's first car to go on the market in 2008. Mm, mm, mm. Ford Motor Company delaying planned three-row electric vehicles similar in size to the Explorer and Lincoln Aviator as it focuses on smaller, more affordable EVs, according to people familiar with the company's plans. The three-row EVs to be built in Canada at Ford's planned Oakville Electric Vehicle Complex were expected to go on sale in early 2025. Instead, Ford is shifting to launch an affordable EV on a small vehicle platform as early as late 2026. Uh, The small crossover is expected to be built at the company's Louisville assembly plant. The UAW and Ford agreed as part of the 2023 labor contract to add a new EV product to Louisville before the deal expires in 2028, although the parties did not specify timing. Automakers are losing thousands of dollars on every electric vehicle they sell. Yeah, they are. Still, and for the most part, not meeting consumer expectations for the vehicles, according to Boston Consulting Group. The group estimates that most automakers lose about $6,000 on each EV they sell for $50,000 after accounting for customer tax credits. If original equipment manufacturers can't make money in this next generation of EVs, something's going to have to change, according to Andrew Lowe, a senior partner at Boston Consulting. Whether automakers have the stomach to keep investing until they get to the level of scale and efficiency where they can actually turn a profit, that is the question. Automakers differ in their approaches to EVs, but most have felt the punch of slowing sales growth. Toyota, for example, will buy credits to meet emissions regulations, choosing to base its EV plans on consumer demand. Ford, which less than two years ago said it wanted to eventually challenge Tesla in EV sales, has cut production of its electric F-150 Lightning pickup and halted shipments for an undisclosed issue. Nearly 40% of 3,000 U.S. consumers surveyed by Boston Consulting in January said they intend to purchase an EV as their next vehicle. But they expressed strict requirements to make the jump. EV intenders want 20-minute charging times, a 350-mile driving range, and a price of $50,000, according to the group's report in the survey. That's a hefty wish list there. It is. You know why. Good luck. Stellan has said Friday it's cutting about 2% of its U.S. engineering, technology, and software jobs, about 400 people, because of unprecedented uncertainties and heightened competitive pressures around the world. Affected workers were notified Friday morning yesterday. Mm-hmm. Layoffs are effective March 31st. Solana says the cuts would better align resources while preserving the critical skills needed to protect our competitive advantage. What a crock of, what a lineup. Hooey. Never mind. I- employees who are laid off will receive severance and other job transition assistance. Well, we talked about that last night at dinner. Uh, China is building an EV plant in Poland, and they're... Uh, Stellantis is getting involved in that. Good luck. Um, An American Honda will reduce dealership profit margins on new vehicles and make other changes designed to help support the company's costly transition to electric, according to a corporate memo. The Japanese automaker's 0.5% profit margin reduction affecting the amount between the invoice price that dealerships pay and the manufacturer's suggested retail price comes with additional changes to marketing, advertising, and service payments. Okay. Honda's actions are a response to customers not yet being widely able to afford EVs. All right. Time now for a quick break on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. We will wrap up today's show right after these brief messages. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award winning Winning beef fajita is the best anywhere. Lupi Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Lupi's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. 
Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. Well, that's it for this week's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. This is your invitation to follow us on Facebook. Give us a like, tell your friends about us, and share our stuff if you would. We'll keep you posted on all things automotive all week long, including our famous interviews, new car reviews, upcoming events, cruise-ins, racing, manufacturer, and car, truck, and SUV news. When you're looking for some award-winning car talk, Listen to us during the week. You can find the In Wheel of Time Car Talk Show 24-7 via the iHeartRadio app. Daily 30-minute podcasts are available from your favorite streaming provider. We post a new episode every day. And don't forget, we live stream this show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com every Saturday, 8 to 11 Central. The In Wheel Time Marketing and Video Technical Director is We Need More, Jeff Zekin. For booking agent, video editor, posting personality, and overall do-it-all, Mike Mars, along with Chief Engineer David Ainsley, who's sleeping David. in this morning, I'm Don Armstrong. We hope you join us next week for another live, award-winning production of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, Saturday, March 30th, 8 to 11, on all of our In Wheel Time Car Talk outlets, live from the Sugar Shack Studios. Have a great weekend. Be safe out there.